time is just flying by, man. I mean, in no time it's going to be 2025. Mm -hmm. Man, I'm so glad that you made it over here. Yeah, me too. I mean, I mean, it was a long drive for you. Mm -hmm. How far did how long did it take for you to get here? Uh, about eight hours. Eight Ooh. hours. That's ridiculous, man. I don't even know how to. I don't even know how to drive for eight hours. Oh, I, maybe I do. <laughs> no, you do. Right. I, know, right? I definitely know how to drive. Yeah. <laughs> All right, guys. Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Sean Simons. PPG Grandpa got uh, Mac. He's our director of engineering over here at Run to the Sky. We're actually over at Run to the Sky right now. We also got Will Fly. And if you want to be on the spinny wheel of Winnie Things, make sure you at Will Fly today. Hey, wait a minute. We can all be on here. So make sure you add me too. I want to be on the spinny wheel of Winnie Things, right? It's always awesome. Um, we got um, Kyle Neal. He's our director of operations over here. Our Linda Anderson, Paramom USA. She's our PR girl. And Scuba Steve. He has his own. Um, what is it again? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Paramotoroutlaw.com. There you go. I cannot remember that. You need to stick with paramotordude.com. But oh, man, he I don't just... need the dude. You need to like with that hair. That hair. Gonna be. I like <laughs> paramotordude.com. <laughs> and we got, uh, Kevin Houston, he is our president of Run to the Sky. This whole thing right here is a nonprofit, and we're very happy that you all made it today. And uh, this is going to be a great episode. Mac, man, I met you down in Texas, mm -hmm. and we started hanging out. You're an old Marine. I'm an old Marine. We started talking Marine Corps stuff, mm -hmm. and boom, you're part of our nonprofit also. Right. Director of Engineering. D tell us a little bit about you all right i mean because you have an amazing background especially the the amp did you say that you work for nasa or did something for nasa too i mean boy okay uh -oh. so this this guy is amazing you gotta listen to this guy this guy is great <laughs> hey there everybody <laughs> uh no just a little background um i'm a 30 year air 30 year amp aircraft mechanic um design engineer and uh a bunch of other hats and things like that that i put in machinists um Years ago, I went into the Marine Corps and started off as an aviation hydraulics technician and started learning everything about aircraft, um, mostly helicopters, um, large scale helicopters and things like that. And then they, um, I went to school for design and engineering and uh, got a few degrees under my belt and been doing aviation for a very long time and just building things, loving it. Um, I do everything from welding to machining to uh, um, cold fabrications, um, name it. And um, I work on everything from skins to, an to engines to hydraulics. Yeah, anything that you can imagine that works with an aircraft. I can, and also composites and things like that, too. Um, so anything you want to ask, feel free to ask. I, I um, get it. I get it. If our paramotor breaks, bring it to you. I got it. Sure. Or you can exactly. give me a call and I can exactly. say how to fix it over the phone. Well, well, <laughs> well remember, we're, we're trying to build uh, paramotors over here and try and quads and all mm -hmm. that fun stuff yep. and we have our um our welder mm -hmm. scott he's an amazing guy he's actually um on the board and um, a part of our nonprofit also mm -hmm. and uh, uh yes this is my real hair um <laughs> it's not a wig i just let the hair down today <laughs> <laughs> and so so we're gonna be so we're we're working on building our own trikes our own quads our own light trikes mm -hmm our own paramotor, our own paramotor frames. Yep. And we want people to wow. really be able to run into the sky. Mm -hmm. You know, if they can't run to, run into the sky, we can definitely trike and roll yeah. into the sky. Pipe bender, a CNC machine, and everything else you can think of. If you're going to be building your own trikes and frames and all that. So mm -hmm. what you got plans for there? Um. Well, like I said, I'm a machinist too. Um. So I'm oh. buying actual tooling and things like that. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. And uh, I have, like I said, I've been doing this for over 30 years. So I have a lot of resources that uh, where if I need something fabricated, then I know the connections to get it fabricated. Over 30 years. You're old, man. <laughs> <laughs> so, but most of the machine work and stuff I do on my own. Um, I've built a lot of things. I used to work for not necessarily NASA, but for another company that's kind of worldwide. It's L3 Communications um, as our fabrications and design technician. So. So the, if y'all do build frames and paramotor, paramotor frames and trikes and stuff like that, they're, they're going to be USA made then? 
Absolutely. Absolutely. Made in Texas. Nice. I like it. I like it. Made in Texas and yeah. well, made made in te- well designed in Texas, but made in Arkansas and Texas. I don't know. We'll see. Yeah, I, think, <laughs> I think it should say made in USA somewhere on the frame because everywhere else that says that they make it in the USA, you know, it's like not really, or you can't tell. I want I'm proud of that. I want it to say yeah. like made in the USA, real big yeah. or something. Yeah, yeah this will be made, designed, yep. flown in the USA. These yep. will not be exported outside the USA. And much, and it's, it's going to be a little different than what you're going to get, though, as far as like, you know, when they when they make products out of the country and they bring them in, as uh-huh. opposed to making here, most of the time the stuff we make here is more expensive. Well, it's going to be just the opposite right. of that. Oh, yeah. Well, I, you, that's that's what everything. But, yeah, I get it. So uh, we're then the, the whole point of why we're designing this is because. I want to make it more cost effective for more people to be able to come into the sport, not so cost prohibitive. So uh, that's yeah. when I'm also designing the um, logistics part of it so that we can have a constant flow of parts and things like that to come in as well mm-hmm. so that we can uh, assemble it and or have uh, send it off to a person to have them assemble it as far as like the customer, show them how to assemble it. And then yeah, they'll, have, they'll actually have a paramotor up and Absolutely. ready to fly. So, yeah, and and that's why we're that's why I made this nonprofit. Yeah, you know, I made it to where everybody can come and learn to fly. Very inexpensive, a mm-hmm. really good quality school. Yep, and we're focusing, of course, on disabled veterans to get them even a better deal. You know, get them in here, get them to be able to fly. Mm-hmm. You know, and and really help them out. I mean, you know, Absolutely. I'm a vet, you're a vet. Mm-hmm. It, it's it's really important to be able. to to, to do something like mm-hmm. this to, to be Kramer, part of the then then only texans would buy it if you put made in texas i'm just saying no i can't help it. other people's views it is what it is texas is a great <laughs> state what can i say it's not the only great state but it's a great state yeah it's a big state i know that <laughs> it is absolutely. i drove through that son of a I, I, no that that's three like days state. to drive through <laughs> yeah yep you start driving through Texas one day, it's like, oh, it took a week mm-hmm. to get through that. It's a team state. effort. It is. <laughs> it is. A That's a huge state. <laughs> we are going to be giving away stuff, so make sure you at Will Fly say, I am here, and I want to be on the spinny wheel of many things. So uh, we are uh, Lone Star is our, uh, uh, our sponsor. They are going to be giving away something every single week, so make sure you check that out. And at the beginning of this you always seen the video of uh, the co- new commercial that they did. They did a really good job. Yeah. Were you, you were down there when they were videoing. Yeah, filming. I'm actually in the video. I didn't see you. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Where are you in, in the video then? You look at the track that's leaving. <laughs> <laughs> see that thing flying right back like, there? That's me. 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 I'm waving. <laughs> Just kidding. That's so hilarious. <laughs> Yeah, but anyways, I got um, a question already. Okay, go for it. Uh, no, Will can go. Will got it. Go ahead, Will. No, well, it, it doesn't matter. To me. So Tony wants to know: uh, Can you compare it to another trike, like say the trike buggy? The trike is going to be built a bit more robust. Um, we're building it around a three hundred cc Cosmos three hundred, um, so it's going to be a little more robust. A lot more durable than most um and the parts if a part does happen get damaged for whatever reason it's going to be a lot easier to replace matter of fact it'll be user replaced um it's what we'll, we'll supply the part and then they can just install it on the track themselves um, that's going to help reduce the cost of manufacturing the parts it's going to also help reduce the shipping and things like that so we won't have to to have such crazy integral parts like stuff that's all welded together um, some components will be required to be welded together but simply because of their stress points and things like that um but for the most part it's pretty straightforward on its assembly is it going to cost a thousand dollars for a frame or a thousand dollars for a hoop or a thousand dollars for netting uh no oh okay that's good yeah. because that's ridiculous yeah and we're gonna just a lot of things that are going to be going to it it's I have looked over, now granted I haven't been in paramotoring a lot, but I'm, I'm a pretty quick study on engineering and things like that. So of the paramotors and things that I've been researching since I got into this at the beginning of the year, um, I look at all the designs and I look what works and what doesn't work. And then I'm putting all the things that really work into this design um, and building it in such a way to where you can make, you have one trike and it's foldable. Um, you detach your engine, even with the Cosmo 300. Yes, you can detach the engine with the way that I'm designing it. And then if you want to make it for a single or you can make it for a dual 
Um, you can do a tandem as well on it in the same design. Um, so, and again, it's going to have suspension, so it'll go over rough terrain pretty smoothly. Um, and then it, it's going to be able to take some pretty heavy people or, you know, a hodgepodge of different. Um, yeah, with a Cosmos 300 on there, you can pick up anything. <laughs> exactly, exactly. <laughs> And with it being liquid cooled, I mean, one version would be the liquid cooled 300. Another version where we've got some other engines that we also have in mind to work with this. Um, but at the very least, it's going to be, you know, it's a higher CC type engine because we want that lift capability. Um, and we're still working out some of the details, but we're going to make it very user friendly where um, one moment you can be flying a single person. And just in a very few moments, I mean, like maybe another 10 or 15 minutes later, you can have it set up for tandem. And um, well, that yeah, kind of so a, if you're a tandem pilot, this mm -hmm. is definitely the one to go to. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So and it's all going to be made out of aircraft grade aluminums um, and some really, really high end type stuff. But I've got a pretty decent source that uh, I can get them at really decent cost. So I can transfer that kind of cost savings to the people that want to buy it. Aircraft quality air aircraft aluminum. Mm -hmm. So what is that exactly for, for people like me that really don't understand the engineering part of this? Mm -hmm. What is aircraft uh, aluminum? Okay. There's a, there's quite a different types of materials out there that you can make it from. Um, there's a, there's the purity of the material is what makes aircraft grade aluminum. Okay. That's what qualifies it as. It's the purity of the aluminums and the, the alloys. Um, it has certain, stringent 4001 um i think it's 4001 or 9001 iso 4001 or 9001 mm -hmm. that um they have to make sure that the alloys are fluid so there's no weak points in the alloys themselves um the grades that we're going to be using as a uh, here's here's where the greek comes in uh 6061 t6 aluminum which is a silicon based aluminum um and it makes it super strong and super light um and Pretty easy to work with, really. Y'all already know it's USA made because it's aluminum, not aluminium. <laughs> aluminium. I, I love I, aluminium. Uh, that, I love the way that, I would I would like some aluminium. Yeah. I mean, I love the way that it's yeah. aluminium. It's, I mean that's, I that's say, cool. aluminium. aluminium. Yes, yes, I don't know where I went with that. So. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so. But yeah, that's the focus of it. And I want to make it as comfortable as possible. I mean, because we're catering to veterans right. to start with. Um, we want people to be able to enjoy the experience of flying without all the, the impacts that it has on the person's body. So mm -hmm. that's going to be the primary focus of how I'm designing this. Um, and it's also going to have, um, <laughs> you might like this part, it's going to have racing, reclining race it, but racing bucket seats, five-point oh, harness. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Five-point <laughs> harness, I like it. <laughs> yeah, and custom colors and you can make it any kind of custom colors you want or if you just want the straight you know the the pretty slick use of the metals because we're using aerodynamic metals um we're not just using tubing um like you've seen a lot of them use round tubing and things of that nature we're using aerodynamic metals um that have the airfoil inside the metal themselves um and a lot of engineering that goes into this some of it's going to be extruded aluminums um which is even stronger um than just say your basic tubing and things like that so there's a lot of engineering that's going into it um but i'm doing all that part for you know just for my own sake because i'm not charging anybody for the engineering part or anything like that in the design it's just basically you know i don't know i don't even have any idea what we're gonna do cost point yet but it doesn't really matter it doesn't matter to me um, i retired five years ago and i'm doing this because i want to help people it's just that simple so any, any more questions well will is there any more questions out there yeah, I got one, and it wasn't covered. Cup holder. Does it have a cup holder? Oh. You know, we do have options. <laughs> <laughs> did, you know, did you see that video that Tucker got? Did Tucker got um, got one of those um, gyroscopic things that stays, like you know, straight? That's easy. Maybe that's the thing to do is just to keep that, uh, you yeah. know, keep a gyroscopic one like, yeah. Yeah. like uh, Tucker did. Yeah, and the whole goal is to keep zip ties in a minimum. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> nice. So you're you're a fabricator, right? Yes. Okay, so and I guess there's a difference between like a welder and a fabricator, like, oh. you know, the same thing, basically. Anybody who makes something from basic elements, from, okay. not sure, basic elements, I'm sorry, um, from raw materials, mm -hmm. okay? Um, you have the different levels of fabrication. You have people that actually do the smelting part, which they make the alloys and things like that. That's usually from larger companies um, because the amount of uh, restrictions are put on how the materials are made. And then you have a fabricator um, who basically makes whatever material, stock material into components or into something, an end product. That's the term of a fabricator. 
So, and that could be machining, oh. building, it could be, and all the other stuff that goes on top of it. Even 3D printing is considered a type of fabrication. So. I'm a fabricator then. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> of plastics. <laughs> <laughs> What's that stuff called? TP something or other? TP. I don't know. The plastic. Yeah, PLA, plastic, and stuff yeah. like that. <laughs> yeah. So, actually, uh, actually um, uh, Kyle got a really good STL file that he's going to send me so we can uh, print. What was that thing that you sent me, Kyle? So it's uh, a part of the thing that it goes on to the props where we can actually hang it and do a balance check. That way, when we start, uh, if you repair the, the prop, we can balance it out and make sure it's not going to have any vibrations. So it's going to be just a free hang. Yeah, and Kyle is going to be uh, uh, working on um, a, a design that we can put the end of a prop that's been broken into a mold and redo the whole prop and fix it. So if you guys have any broken props, we'll be able to fix broken props, too, in the future. Thank you, Kyle. Yeah, and I am a composite technician, too, by the way, if anybody needs any help repairing props. Nice. Dude. Kyle, Kyle, get up with this guy. This <laughs> You two need to be talking. But I'm an, I'm an FAA technician. So remember that it's going to be to the requirements of the FAA. So it's going to make your stuff even better. Um, and that was the whole point of me getting on here today is because I want, I've heard throughout, again, the, the career, the time that I've spent in this, how many engine outs you've had, how many different types of damage that you've had because of things not being built to certain specifications that I would require them to be able to build to. Um, in order to keep everybody safe. Um, maybe we can reduce the amount of people getting injured in this sport. Absolutely. You because, know? because right. I mean, you are a certified aircraft mechanic, A and P. Correct. And so you work on actual aircraft and yes. the difference between the stuff that you see here mm -hmm. and the stuff that you work on and certified aircraft world of difference, world of difference. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And what we're trying to do is come up with really better quality, better engineered, frames, trikes, and quads to keep people a lot safer. That's correct. Any other questions out there? Yeah, Scooby, you want to take some? Uh, sure. Wow. I didn't know we had that many. Um, let's see. Um, let's see. Will it be broken down to be transferred, or will it be, once it's built, you need a hauler? It's going to be, It's you can fold it. And the, the idea is it's going to have a pivot point. You'll be able to remove your engine um, and take the um, guard off in three sections. Um, and then you're going to, you can actually, once you've moved those two then you fold it over and then you'll fold the other top back. And then the landing gear actually will come off and the suspension will come off so that you can slide it into or on, you know, on a smaller trailer. When you said like, take off your engine, are we talking about like that quick prop thing that can, we can pull off a prop and put it back on? Are you going to have something similar like similar, that? But we much can... more robust. Okay. Where yeah. we can just take off the engine like that. That's no problem. Yes. That's so much better than those darn bolt things that we got. Going I'm right assuming, because somebody asked, does it have a assist? I'm assuming if he's going to make it where it can do tandem also, there's going to be some type of frame that goes over. So yes. you probably will it'll have a full AS. Roll cage. Yes, it will be classified as a full row cage because of the diameters of the the the, the cage it's going to be itself. Um, and you can hang the whole thing on the upper part of the roll cage. It's just going to be built that strong. Um, but yeah, at the same time, it'll be lightweight, which is going to be really kind of fun to get the balance of the two. Um, but yes, that's the idea. Um, and it, it will have a roll cage because I don't if someone does tilt over on it for whatever reason, then um, I want them to be protected, you know, so that they can stay in their little cocoon of protection, if you will. Um, and it's at the same time, it's going to be easy to get into and easy to get out of because um, I'm going to build that into it as well. Um, also, one of the things I want you to remember, too, is if you're a beginning triker and you're not you're more concerned about the tilt. One of the, one of the differences I'm making is that your landing gear can be shifted outward, making it wider mm -hmm. or making it narrower. And it's going to be a low center of gravity type trike. So lots of you know, lots of ideas are coming into it to make it even safer than what we've got out there. Yeah, and we got we got uh, a bunch of trikes out here now too. And with our with our uh, people that have come in, they've come in with crutches and obviously with some disabilities. And we've noticed that uh, the open front end open uh, open cockpit is mm -hmm. a lot easier for people to get in and out of, mm -hmm. except for, uh, because some of them they come down like this and arc down. 
to the front wheel. And that just is very difficult for people to get in and out, especially when they have crutches. Yep. Hey, speaking about that, I, I do have one. Uh, I do have a guy that has crutches and he wants to fly and be able to stow his crutches. So if he does land out someplace, mm-hmm. Yep. So is that something that we can do too? Oh, add, absolutely. Add on something like absolutely. that. Absolutely. I can, and that's that's part of the why I'm building that type of frame mm-hmm. is the add on. Let's see, what do we got? Cigarette lighter. Don't recommend it. You know, <laughs> there's. Um, <laughs> uh-huh. You know, your, your other things that you've got. Uh, yeah. So uh, there, that's there's funny. All kinds of ways to have different adaptations to it, and and as time goes by and we do more tests and things like this, because I live, like I said, I work on airplanes and where I work at the air, when I work on the airplanes, I have a huge airfield that I can test all this stuff with. Um, and so, you can bring it over here and I, yes, we can test too. it over here too. Yes, yeah. but, uh, but we'll actually do like most the of the suspension. Because, yes. you know, a lot of the times when we land, it's usually in an open field somewhere and it's not usually just perfect, smooth grass. You know, it's, it's bumpy. So that suspension will help a lot. We're going to have a dual suspension type on it. Um, I've got one specific type that I know is makes it really, really, really easy. Um, but, and again, I'm, I'm being very vague because I haven't worked out all the details yet, but it's going to have a dual suspension on it so that it's nice and, and easy to land, um, really easy on our backs. And remember, I said a, a reclining seat, so you can actually lean back or lean forward and make that adjustment for yourself because not everybody is positioned the same. Yeah. And you like you like red, whereas leaning back like that with all that cushion on that too. Oh, oh, yeah, that, you got, was, yeah, that was slick. Yeah, that, that was very that comfortable nice. going down. Yeah, um, but I have all, all kinds of cool stuff that's going to happen with it, and um, it's actually and also I'm working on a brake system. Um, y'all tell me what you think about having a brake system on it, but it's going to be an aft brake system, not on the front, um, and it's going to be simple pedal push um, with a bunch of other nifty things um potentially self-steering and some other things that are going to be self steering is amazing what this guy is talking about for the self-steering thing um it i don't know if you want to talk about that or not but it's 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 is it is it's amazing yeah. hey uh, do we have any more questions i think that we got a lot of questions that are popping up in the in the chat yeah you do and man mac it's it's dangerous you're opening it up to suggestions <laughs> Can you? Add, can you? Add I'm open. That's the beauty. Yeah, yeah. Seriously, I want one of those little antennas with a tennis ball on top of it. You know, satellite radio. <laughs> Put me some satellite radio in there. That'll work. Anything's possible. Anything's possible. I mean, with the with the framework that I'm making, I mean, I can pretty much mount anything you want in there. You know, it would be really nice yeah. is to have a little dash that sits down by your feet mm-hmm. that shows your temperatures. You know, if your exhaust and, and uh, RPMs and all that stuff. Panel? Fuel oh, gauge. Put a it, fuel it, gauge on a fuel gauge. There you go. Here's the, here's the problem with that. Here's the problem with running it down by your feet. Most okay. people that are getting old, you know, we're yeah. not wearing glass up there. So I'm going to have it up here. Good. Somewhere where you can look over to the side and you're going to be able to see those gauges. Oh, so in other words, we have the, the roll cage. You have like an instrument and an instrument right there. <laughs> actually yeah now something like that to you know that especially if it could be mounted different locations you know for field of vision or whatever for your close-up yep. yeah, yeah i hear that's you totally doable absolutely yep. one of the freedoms of engineering is that ideas i welcome any ideas that you have because i'm not saying i know everything because i really don't i do know what i do know but i'm always welcoming in outside input and if someone, you know, I have a base model that I'm going to design and engineer. And if someone has an idea to add something to it, I'm all ears about that. I really am. So, yeah. Cool. Any other questions in the super chat, guys? Tony is bringing up something and it is a, a valid point about copyright. So is it going to be open source or are you going to copyright it or how are you going to or and maybe you haven't even thought of it yet? Um, okay. You're talking about um, patented it. Because yes, not, not copyright. That's right. Copyright. Well, that, that's something interesting too. It's like, um, would we want something open source like that? I mean, it is a nonprofit; could be open source. Real quick, guys, in the in the super chat, what do you think? Should this be like an open source uh, because it is uh, a nonprofit? Let us know in the uh, in the super chat. Um, any other questions while they're going to, um. Let us know if it should be patented. China's going to come around. He's making money off this. We need to make a clone of it, which would. They won't be able to put the made in America. No, and it would be inferior quality on top of it. It would be crap metal that would just fold first time it landed. Yeah. 
and, and, and I can attest to that. I used to work at a fabrication shop where we built tanks and things like that. And uh, I was the QC or the quality control for that. And the materials and stuff that we had sent off a prototype to China to get built. And then we made the same one here. And when it came, when theirs came back from China, it had over 200 flaws in wow. the material. You know, 200. And wow. the tank was only a 10 foot by 10 foot tank. Real something real simple to make with a couple of internal structures, over 200 flaws in the material and the workmanship. So, no. Well, yeah, they're sending back a tank. They wanted to fill. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's a hydro. It was designed to hold pressure under um, fluids under pressure. Okay. So, not a tank. Not a tank. Tank. A tank. No, yeah. Okay. It, was, it, was a, it was a hydro tank. So, it was designed to hold water. Gotcha. But, yeah, so I wouldn't trust sending it over there either, not for life-saving. Now, to me, this is life-saving equipment, so I believe yeah. in those standards. Yeah. I really do. I think yeah. I think everybody should make um, all of the paramotors a lot safer. You know, I mean, we're getting way too many hands that are being, you know, chopped. We got way too many accidents mm -hmm. and frames that are buckling and and the the props are shattering. There's just way too many flimsy things that are out there. I agree. Totally yeah. agree. I, I guess another thing too, guys, we're looking for, I don't know if it's called a seamstress anymore, but someone that can sew and make really good um, um, harnesses. Because mm -hmm. we, I mean, I don't sew, do you? Yes. <laughs> what does this guy not do? <laughs> this is what I, do. I used to sew my own climbing harnesses. Come on. <laughs> wow. <laughs> hey, we, we got a good guy here. I mean, <laughs> I don't sew. I'll cook, but I don't sew. Yeah. Well, I guess whatever. <laughs> Any other questions in the super chat? And, and of course, did anybody say anything about what what they thought about being open source or you know our own patent type of thing? Greg says that he would patent it because someone's just going to steal your technology and try to undercut you. Of course, I think China would do it anyways. Yeah. Regardless, but he's yeah. got. It. That's always a thing. You're always going to get someone who wants to reverse engineer something. You know, that's just the way it is. That's the way it, that's even if you patent something, all they have to do is change one small thing and the patent doesn't matter. Right. So and they can even patent their own stuff. So my goal is, to, like I said, to build this in such a way to where it's straightforward. It has a really good design. And again, I'm not in it to make money. I'm in it to help who needs to be helped. And mm -hmm. I'm, I'm in it to help people get into the sport without, you know, having to you know, get a new lease on their own, their own home or something, I a know. mortgage on their home in order to get that. You know what I'm saying? So that's my goal. Okay. Absolutely. So, and, and I'm going to design it in such a way that, and I've already got two different prototype designs that I'm already working on. Uh, but now that I'm here and we've actually, I've got some engines and stuff that I can work with, it's going to actually go really fast. So my goal is to have a prototype up and working in the next six weeks. Um, so we'll see how this all works out and pans out. Are you Absolutely. using a CAD system? Like some kind of program or something to put things together. SolidWorks. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's cool. Yeah. If I do, I do SolidWorks and then um, I do that for the general designing. And then um, most of it won't be um, CNC milled unless I find that I, actually the, there's more and more people wanting this. And then I'll change the, the production and actually the logistics of it a little bit so that I can have more parts really available. It just depends on what the supply and demand is going to be for that. I think you should have like at least two designs, one that's fully break downable. And then the other one could be, you know, a more solid trike for the people that have toy haulers or whatever that don't have to break down the trike and they can just pull it up on there. Maybe they don't want the option to break it down. They want a solid piece. So I don't know. That's, that's what I've been, that's what I've been telling him that it's like, you need one that's solid that that will stay solid because there's people that don't want to break it down. Okay. Yeah, but yeah, and, the you know, one I and, would and also and also too is like I said for schools here. I mean, I'd rather have one that's solid that's mm -hmm. not going to break down. The breakdown to me are weak points, but he says that he can engineer these things so the breakdowns are not weak points. Nope. And um, you know, I, I think that having a solid solid machines over at schools would probably be good too. And like you said, you know, scuba people that have a toy hauler. Maybe they don't want to break it down. And again, and just so you know, the the weight class we're looking at, we're looking at between a larger trike right in the middle or two the light tracks. We're going to try to put the weight right in the middle of it. So that gives you more versatility to what you want to do. Um, could it be making it one solid piece? Oh, yeah, absolutely. But with the the fasteners and things like that and, and the, the way that I'm going to build these, um, it's really not going to make that much difference because of how strong they're going to be. Okay. 
So I, I guess if you do have the, I mean, if you do make it to where there isn't any um, points that could break on your design that mm -hmm. does break down, mm -hmm. then it's just uh, more convenient for for them to mm -hmm. uh, to be able to put it together mm -hmm. and or ship it. Because if we ship it in the smaller box, it's going to be cheaper. That's correct. So I don't know, guys. What do you think? Should we have two different designs? We got the super chat there for a reason. What do you think? Uh, have one design where it's all solid, or have um, I, or two designs? I would definitely go with the portable option first. That's probably going to attract the most amount of people. But then you're going to have a few that are probably like, no, I'd rather have a solid unit. I think the portable one is going to cater to more people because of the fact that. Some people drive around in their little Prius, you know. I need to be able to put my paramotor in my Prius. So, you know, you, yeah. you got to be able to make it to where it might be able to fit in a smaller vehicle. I mean, I wouldn't say a Prius, but, you know, a smaller vehicle. Well, you're going to be able to take off all the landing gear. That's one of the benefits of what I'm building. You're going to be able to take off all the landing gear and slide it onto a trailer or onto the back of a truck pretty easily would you be able to take off like the trike part and take off that front wheel and put on another one that would be a quad would you be able to interchange that absolutely really yeah because i think that'd be a really good idea too because some people really like the quads yeah. some people like the trikes mm -hmm. and instead of having to buy a whole new setup all you'd have to do is just you know get the front part mm -hmm. and make it however you well not sure make it because like i said i'm, I'm developed a um i wouldn't say i've developed it but i'm kind of using an idea that's been used before realistically speaking by not a paramotor company but by someone by another technique and stuff that i've worked with before it's kind of a self-driving type ordeal as well and maybe uh, make the 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 rear wouldn't really matter because you could just change out the wheels on the rear but the front maybe make the front fork a little wider that way say you want to switch to a beach tire you could put a wider tire on there because if you make the fork narrow you couldn't put a bigger tire in there because it would be too narrow so just saying like yeah, if you had a, a wider make port. It, that now these are going to be kind of <laughs> the tires and stuff that I have in mind as part of this, the part of the suspension system. So really, when you think about it, it has three suspension systems to it. Okay. Uh -huh. And tires that I have in mind, I will um, take some of the brunt force and then be easily replaceable, easily to work with, and they would last a long time. Those uh, beach tires that we have, those gray tires mm -hmm. that you, that, to me, that feels great when yeah. we're when we're driving it and flying. Is that the kind of uh, tire that you're thinking about or something different? Something different. Something different. And it's yeah. going to be pretty slick. We're talking mag wheels here. I mean, like aluminum mag wheels that are lightweight. I want spinners on mine. I'm just saying. <laughs> okay, I got it. <laughs> so LED, LED lights. Yeah, man. Yeah, LED lights. I just, man, I know, I just make it, it has, you know, like lasers that shoot out in pods that go in there. So as you're taking it up and you got a light show coming from your tires, <laughs> anything <Sure>. is possible. <laughs> hey, um, another thing, too, I know that a lot of people like the LED stuff around. Is there any way that you could embed LEDs into this trike and easy. make it easy? Mm -hmm. Engineers, I tell you. Oh, yeah, yeah easy. Yeah. No with this. We'll just do whatever because there, everyone likes to have LEDs mm -hmm. on their trikes mm -hmm. or on their paramotor. Sure. So if you could embed them, mm -hmm. and uh, would you be able to actually? I don't know. Are there some um, motors out there that actually, or can we put on something that will actually generate electricity so we don't have to have battery packs? Well, we can make <laughs> many funny. generator. We can make this solar powered. <laughs> yeah, but you know, you're not a a small battery is fine because you're not. It's no, not like going to be fine. Eight to ten. LED, hours. LEDs only work off of three volts anyway. They're very. They're just use a very little bit of amps. You can have higher intensity LEDs, um, which I would recommend for some of these applications. Um, but most of the time, your LEDs, depending on how many you run, can run off of small batteries without a problem. Especially with the battery technology we have now, it should not be a problem. But then you can. We can actually put a um like on the brakes themselves you can actually put a power generator you ever have those old ones where you used to have yes the, I was the just lights thinking. off of your bicycle yes. and it would actually run off the friction off of your yep. tire every oh. time you pedal you hear rear, rear, rear. <laughs> yeah. trying to get that generator yeah. right Austin, yeah. um curb feelers go too far back i'm just saying <laughs> <laughs> so the good news is you can do all this stuff the bad news is it's going to be a four hundred thousand dollar paramotor when we're all done is right <laughs> oh, <laughs> 
that's the thing. That's the cool thing about it is because um, a lot of the a lot of the reasons we get a lot that really high price tag is from R and D, right? Yeah. And R and D and the engineering aspect, and there's a huge, huge um, overhead cost for these companies that build these. We don't have that because we got this guy <laughs> right here. <laughs> and like I said, I'm retired. I'm not in it for the money. I'm in it to to build it, get it out there, and you know if it if it starts ebbing our sport into being more productive and more safer for those that want to get into it. And that's my goal yeah. really. Cause I mean, the idea of flying has helped me so much. I've had to learn how to walk again. Um, I've had to do a lot of things. I'm going to, I'm a survival instructor too, but I teach this part. I don't teach, well, I do teach the rest of it too, but this is what I teach, but getting people into the sky is nothing can compare to that. I can't teach True. what the sky teaches people. I can't teach what learning this sport teaches people. You know, and I've been teaching that for over 25 years. So that's why I'm in this. And, and anything I can do to help people build a custom ride to get them into the sky. Yeah. To create that Zen area for themselves. Help my try it. A new show. That's right. I was just going to say that, Scuba. See? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I didn't hear it. Crazy minds like, think alike. Help my trike, you know. <laughs> oh, help my trike. <laughs> yeah, who wants to do that? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> put a good so, sound system on there and the lights and oh yeah oh it's totally ready to go man <laughs> you know I didn't, I didn't ask you this before but i guess it just came up real quick is um electric trike or electric motors mm -hmm. could do you have an, any engineering as far as like making uh an electric motor for parameters for, for what do you mean like for a motor to, to to like fly. to pull the prop yeah there's already companies out there and there's products readily available actually engineering a motor would not be cost effective really okay yeah, it would not be um because the motors you can get at a pretty decent price um and then the, the biggest problem is the technology behind the batteries um and that's the most cost cost costly thing um okay. could i build them yes but it's not cost effective well if not you are, if you already if we already if we buy the motors yes would I you can be able it, to yes. frame it out and and do that matter of fact the 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 designs that i'm doing on this now granted remember we're looking trying to out this for a 300 cc motor right okay so to have that versatility of power so you don't have to dump the throttle you, you every time mm -hmm. and unless the unless the electric motors can put out that kind of power that's senseless to do that well i tell you what the sp140 that mm -hmm. open ppg makes mm -hmm. i flew that one and you know i fly you know um, most 185 mm -hmm. i fly the 220s mm -hmm. and i fly 300 so mm -hmm. i mean i i can kind of feel what what the difference is sure. the sp140 feels like it's a 220 well that's doable so that's a lot of power and you could and i don't know if you could use like maybe car batteries or something like that that you can actually put them on the frame that way that's you know it's car batteries don't put well you know power. not car batteries but <laughs> batteries would, that that put out that type of power yeah it you would, know not not something that we have to make ourselves but something that's already out there that we can use that amperage for i understand what you're saying yeah um that's another dynamic altogether mm -hmm. because we're also talking about weight and mm -hmm. that's going to be a key factor for batteries um and so how to do right. we, we talked about trikes what about foot launch units are you going to make a, a foot launch unit so obviously you're going to make a frame are you you going to make it where it can break down easy also like the cage or the hoop or, is or, that is that a question in the super chat it, it is, is a question okay it and is i, I just question. added on to it but yeah they asked right, who, who, who asked the question shannon brooks okay and it was uh what information about uh foot launch foot frames okay um i have a I haven't really gotten that on design yet, uh -huh. um, but it, it has been a thought that I'm actually pushing um, in order to get there. But, you know, we, we're going to not sort of take baby steps because those have already been taken. Um, now we're actually getting into the actual ordering the materials and things like that for the trikes. Now, that does equivalent to be able to do foot launches. Yes. Um, but there's so many other facets that go along with that. Um, and there's so many good designs out there that I'll have to take a closer look, to be honest with you. I'm not going to sit here and lie to you. Um, I will tell you that it is in the thought, um, but I haven't started design work on that yet, but at the some point, it, at some point, yes. But remember, um, I want to be, try to get as many people into the sky as we can, um, which is why we started with trikes because right. there's a lot of people that don't have that physical ability to do that. So, um, but yeah. Yeah. So I think that once we really hone our skills, when it comes to fabricating these trikes, mm -hmm. um, transferring that over to a foot launch machine 
would probably be pretty easy. Easy. Very easy. Yeah. Um, there's there's some also some other things that's going to be really cool with the tracks and stuff that I can transfer over into the other. Um, but again, there's a lot of good designs that are coming out right now that I'm still exploring and taking a close look at mm -hmm. um, because I want to be sure that we're not copying other design work. I want to be sure that we come up with a system that's going to be really good for a lot of people. Um, and yes, we can fine tune it to every individual if we really need to. Um, but of course, that's going to be something that is going to be required to do more engineering and more R&D on because I'm not going to send anything out that's going to get someone hurt. I just won't do it. No. Um, again, that's why we're also starting with trikes, um, just for the thought. But yes, we can start doing design work after we get our trikes proofed. Um, and my goal is to have them proofed and probably in production by the end of the summer at the very latest. Um, and we'll see how this works out. You know, I mean, God's got all kinds of ways. That by the end of the summer, you better hurry up. This is production. I'm not talking about. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm talking about having a prototype out within the next six weeks at the latest. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. you're. Moving then we're, right along. Nice. Right. And then we're going to be flying these, making yep. and, and tweaking it out. Yeah. You know, with him being a triker and me being mm -hmm. a triker, you know, yep. we'll be able to feel, you know, it's like, hey, something needs to do this or we need to do this or yep. something like that. Tweak them up and then, you know, be able to, you know, maybe, maybe um, who else out there? Uh, Scuba Steve, you do trikes, right? Um, Kyle, Kyle's going to be doing trikes. So, Will, do you do trikes at all? Never. You don't be able to that. notice because you got a Cosmo 300 on the back, man. It'll blow through any problem that's on the trike. Just, ah, you just power it through it. <laughs> now, power never. solves a lot of problems. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, but, but the thing is, too, it's not just about, you know, punching it and going. Mm -hmm. It's about being able to taxi. You know, when you can taxi that thing and you can tip the wing and tip drag it, bring it back up tip drag it and bring it back up and you're just taxing along to do your figure eights and your infinites mm -hmm. that's where it's all about you know anybody can just punch it and go yeah. we want to make sure you know it feels good mm -hmm. when we are taxiing and it, and it feels nice and stable mm -hmm. you know taking off then coming in for a landing mm -hmm. too and we're working on a self-steering design um so that and you've got to tell them about that stuff oh, come oh my on. gosh all right so but it's, it's instead so exciting. of exciting so exciting yeah um, it is. There's there's a lot of things that are going to it um, to make it user friendly. And remember, we started this idea to help veterans, but it's not just veterans we're looking to help. Exactly. It is anyone who wants to get into the sky, hopefully, no matter what their disability is. Right. Um, obviously, quadriplegic, that's going to be pretty tough. Um, but if a person has the ability to use some of their appendages to be able to handle the flying of the kite, we can work with the rest. Um, and then we'll, again, we'll just work with it, um, in order to figure out exactly what we need to do, but I don't give up on anybody. If we can figure it out, we'll make it happen. Well, also too, we have a couple of our trainer trikes that's been fabricated too, um, by Mark down in uh, Florida mm -hmm. from Air Sports USA. Mm -hmm. And he actually designs them like the PPCs where you can actually use your feet to steer mm -hmm. the wing instead of, you know, using your hands. Yeah. So if you're missing a hand, you can still throttle with your hand and steer with your feet. Mm -hmm. sure. So, I mean, there's many different ways that we can fabricate these machines <laughs> to work with anybody that's um, mm -hmm. that, that depending on who they are and what their uh, disability may be, Correct. we can work with it. Yep. And also there's another idea that I just came up with, you yeah. know, if you've got two people that don't have, or you have a person that doesn't have arms, but they have to use their legs, the throttle can be operated by a mouth switch. Yeah. It would actually have the, um, mm -hmm. the, the mouth throttle. Yeah. So, I mean, th that was actually one of the earliest designs of small throttles. Yeah. So, I mean, there's no, there's, there's very little limitations on what we have the ability to do. And I'm really looking forward to seeing what comes up because it's every challenge that I get, I love to see that spark that comes into a person's eye when they've done something that they thought they never could. It's always been amazing. So I look forward to seeing how this is going to turn out and I'm enjoying the the process of it every day. So. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Because, I mean, I was given all this knowledge for a reason. I'm, like I said, I don't know all of it, but with what I do know and with the resources I have, I'm looking forward to helping a bunch of people. So, yeah. Absolutely. Anybody have any questions in the Super Chat or on the panel? Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Tony is asking, he says, what about steering dampener, like a motorcycle, so the wheel doesn't get wheel wobble? Yes. Yes, we will actually have the steering dampeners, adjustable steering dampeners. 
I was looking at it. A couple that could of, be, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt, but is it going to be similar like red? It's going to be just like red. Okay, okay. Okay. I was taking a look at some designs today and, and getting some ideas about how to make it easier. Um, and again, it also depends on what your um, what that front end is going to be like. Because remember, I told you you can take the front end out right. and then change that either to a tandem or you can change it to where it's a quad instead of a trike. Um, but in order to make it, quote unquote, self-steering, um, I don't I haven't quite worked it out. Um, my mind's working on it as we speak. How to work a quad into a self steering type deal? There That's will a be a little bit different than a trike. Correct. Um, a little bit different this, but also like this. And that's gotcha. something I haven't worked out just yet um, because I just thought of it. Someone just asked the question. However, by the end of the evening, I will have an answer. <laughs> so you know that, um, and I'm just like an average Joe. I don't know the first thing about fabricating, but it would seem to me. And Tony mentioned it something about this but it each if you've got something that is that you can take apart that means you've got things you have to put together which would mean you would have more failure points or is that a challenge or how do you overcome that you you overcome it with first getting the right materials okay right. um a lot of the a lot of the tracks that i've seen are made to just be cheap materials i mean that granted it's all aluminum, um, the right. stuff that I've seen. Um, granted, you do have some stainless steels and some different tracks, and you do have some other materials. Um, but the materials that I'm going to be using, um, that's where the fabrication starts, plain and simple, is getting the best materials you possibly can and then working with that material to create the best solution, okay? Um, yes, are there, there there's any chance for anything, whether it's bolted or whether it's welded, mm -hmm. depending on how you fly, how you land, what you run into, um, and your skill set, you're going to damage it no matter what. Mm -hmm. So right. the cool thing about the manufacturing techniques that I'm going to be doing, okay, and that I have in mind to do with very, very minimal type welds, if it's even required, because at this point, it's not even required to have a weld in there, um, where the parts are easily interchangeable. So really, you can either send off, send your, send your track off that's been welded, and get a really expensive part in because welding and fabrication is expensive or you can get something that's a little more robust that still works with the dynamics of what i'm doing and what we're building and it's just the easy user replaceable type item so you have keeping a, the, you have uh, a point there because so even though you know your paramotor it doesn't come and it's not formed in one piece it's welded so each weld would be a connection point if you think about it and that's subject to break so I, yeah i can see how that the starting with good material and Good workmanship would make the difference. Yes. And Sorry, it's, uh, uh, go ahead. Is it going to be limited to the Cosmo 300? Are you going to make the frame where you can swap out different motors? And is it going to use its own harness or the harness that's already on said motor? Um, what we're going to do is presently, where we, I was building the design around that size engine, the 300 or a couple of different right. other models that I'm going to be testing. But we're going to have different mounting plates. The mounting plates oh, okay. will, yeah. And once you have the mounting plate um, that we'll have for a specific engine, um, engine mounting option, um, the angles, everything that's required in order to run it efficiently and have it where you're coming in for your landing, you have a nice rear touchdown first, as opposed to, you know, a flat touchdown. Um, as, as, you know, with all the rest of it that's coming into place, um, it's going to be with a variety of motors, to be honest with you. Um, I haven't, again, I've worked out, the weights and stuff and the balance and the material costs and all this other stuff that's going along with it um, in order to run the size engine I'm talking about. Um, but again, it's modular. Well, we're that's only talking the about the, the Cosmo 300 because of the power behind yeah. it, because we've, we've seen people that, I mean, if you're at 250 pounds mm -hmm. and you're running a trike mm -hmm. with a Moser 185, mm -hmm. that does not have very much lift. Mm -hmm. However, if you're only, you know, 150 or, or only 200 pounds, mm -hmm. you know, and you have a lighter trike, man, I think can, you know, mm -hmm. rocket ship you up. So sure. it really depends on your weight, the weight of the trike, your mm -hmm. bells and whistles mm -hmm. and having different mounting plates, you can put on any type of you know uh any type of engine that you want mm -hmm. and you know everything else is going to be third party anyway right i mean 30 third party is going to be your engines your throttles uh, i would do i would like to have off-grid throttles for everything well off -grid. 
Yeah, Even really Tony like saying, I, I need the 300 on my big boy. I, I'm thinking about the weight of the actual trike itself. It's obviously, I mean, if he's building between, you know, the heavy PPG trikes that uh, they have for par power parachute, PPC trikes, in between a normal trike and a PPC trike, and if it's going to be that heavy, then you probably do want the stronger engine because I don't think you only you say anything about the PPC because no, the, no, beast, no. the beast that's two hundred fifty pounds. Way, no, I'm only talking probably between one hundred to one hundred twenty five pounds for the whole trike. Okay. Yeah, so it's going to be a lightweight trike, but it's going to be built out of robust materials. Um, and matter of fact, the the loop, um, the 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 blade guard, um, the hoop, the hoop. The hoop. Yeah. Um, it's going to be made out of composites. Um, oh, and he was telling me about yeah. this and how he's going to design the hoop mm -hmm. and stuff. And we're going to recess the hoop is going to have the the prop inside the hoop. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I, I don't understand why there's so many different hoops out there where the blade, where our prop is on the outside. It, it has to do with the way that the engines are mounted. The fact that different engines have different distances mm -hmm. between where the prop goes and where, where it was initially designed to hold a certain type of uh, um, a certain type of motor. Um, but don't you think that the prop should be within your, it your prop guard? Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Um, but the design that we're doing is, like I said, it has all aerodynamic type tubing and things like that that's going to be put into it. Um, so the drag coefficient will be less, so it'll be more efficient in the air um, and easier and easier to maneuver. Um, and also, we're going to, yes, you will be able to mount different engines to it, but we're going to limit the lower range of the engines to probably just a 185. Um, but I don't know for sure yet. I'll, uh, as we go by and as we do more R&D on how things float and how things work with this, um, we'll be able to give more of a rundown as to what engines we can put on it. Um, so, and then we'll, at some point, yes, I'll be making plates for mounting purposes and things like that. Because, um, so, again, I want to make this as easy to work with as possible, very user-friendly, which a lot of the trikes, um, when you're talking about the way it's put together and I've seen a lot of mist just in the, the short time I've been in the, the power paragliding. I've seen a lot of things that really raise my eyebrow mm. maintenance actions that are really raising my eyebrows and like, holy mackerel, that is too complicated for the average person to go out and assemble. Um, so I want to try to keep it as simple as I can. And I think about With, as far as the harnesses, yeah. we're going to do that retracting seat first. Yes. So it's going to be a seat first, right? So we, so our first design is going to be designed hopefully for people that, you know, want to have a trike. Mm -hmm. It has the five point harness. Mm -hmm. It's retractable. So it's more comfortable, yep. relaxing. Yep. And then yep. after we get that design and get that out there, our yep. next one would be probably a light trike where you put your foot launch motor on the light trike. Correct. See, that's what I was talking about. Yeah, not right. And, uh, you know, and then we'll probably go to from that to a foot launch. Yes, I would um, that's, that's that's part of it. But also it's going to be um, I was just thinking at the same time we were talking about that. Um, one of the things that we're going to be designing is the difference in lengths for different for different heights of people. Yes, um, this has been a really this has been an issue mm -hmm. for people over here, because a lot of the trikes that we have, you know, it's either too far, you know, mm -hmm. too long where they can't put their feet on it or too close where your knees are up like mm -hmm. this. Yep. And it's been very difficult. And yep. he's come up with this really, and I've been thinking about different things too. It's like, well, can we, can we move the the bar this way? Can we move the whole thing forward and backwards? Can we just move the seats? Mm -hmm. and, he, and he tells me about these uh, engineering things that I just don't have the concept of. Mm -hmm. And he came up with this really awesome way of being able to extend it or bring it back. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What was it? Um, basically you're, it's going to have a center um, mast, if you will, um, a center mast, and that'll have your entire nose landing gear will be attached in that mast. So it slides in a compartment in order to adjust the length of it and make it where you can adjust it an inch out at a time. It's going to have different placements and different pins and things like that to be able to make it more customized lengths for the person. Which will make a huge, huge difference for schools, um, obviously, but also too, you know, um, you can get yourself the trike that is designed mm -hmm. for your length. How tall mm -hmm. are you? I'm six, two. Mm -hmm. Well, you'll need this one with this particular front yep. mount. Yep. So it'd be more designed for you and your height. Mm -hmm. And if you're talking about, I remember someone had talked about, okay, is it going to be stress points on this? Because if we're talking about changing links with something down the mast, if you will, um, you know, because you're talking about a quick release pin and things like that, that's arranged in a certain way so it doesn't lose any of its strength. Right. Um, that's going to be a potential fail point. Well, there's sacrificial parts that keep it from happening. That's a whole engineering type deal. And he was um, telling me about this yeah. too. Just, I mean, this brain that he has is just incredible. <laughs>
but uh yeah so so being able to pull that out and bring it back and uh having enough of that tubing in there kind of like the retractor trike that retractor trike has tubing all the way through mm -hmm. so when it is fully extended it's still solid solid right. so that's kind of on the same I guess the same idea, mm -hmm. the retractor track Similar. where it can go out, but then it can stop at a certain point and put bins in it. Mm -hmm. Similar. That, that's mm -hmm. that's amazing. Just a slightly different type concept because I've got I've got three basic designs on how I'm working with that one. Mm -hmm. I'm just haven't had a chance to do R and D on it to figure out what the best design possibility is going to be. We've been talking basically all day about this. So this little podcast that's been going on for just 50 minutes so far, he and I have been talking all day long about this. Mm -hmm. And I, I I wish that we would have had a camera going all day long uh, because this is this engineer. I mean, he's talking about so many incredible things that I never even thought of. Mm -hmm. And this stuff is just while, you know, just in his brain at all times. Uh, old Marine Corps, man, mm -hmm. I tell you. Yeah. Good. When I'm, and when I'm passionate about something, it just kind of flows. So I'm passionate about helping people get into the sky, mm -hmm. you know, and because um, it's made a huge difference in my life. I mean, yeah, I started with skydiving you know, back in 2010, but it doesn't compare to this. It yeah. just doesn't, you know, doesn't. and uh, this has more, it's more, what's the word? Pure. Yeah. 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 It's more pure and getting you to the sky and just giving you the experience of capturing that sensation of flight. Everybody here knows what I'm talking about, exactly. you know, and it's, it's, and the more people I can make that available to the better the better life is going to be for a lot of people. And skydiving so. is great, but you got to wait for a plane to take yeah, you out. Yeah, that's this the right here, thing. You just, yeah. you just go. You just you, get in and, and you can get up to whatever it. altitude you want, cut your motor, and then now you're a glider because we're mm -hmm. powered paragliders. Well, even yeah. on a trike, you're still paragliding. Yeah, exactly. So you can still paraglide mm -hmm. on a trike. I tell yeah. you, trikes are awesome. Yeah. I know there's so many people out there. It's like they they refuse to do the trike thing. Mm -hmm. They don't want to do it because they want to be that foot launch guy. But let me tell you something. You go out to a fly-in and you and the wind shifts where you have to go all the way across that way to come this way. Mm -hmm. That trike really helps. Think about this. You bolt on four bolts or however you want to do this. Mm -hmm. You get your wing and your wing bag, start it up, and you drive over there. Mm -hmm. You take off those four bolts. Mm -hmm. Now you're over there. Now you have a foot launch. If you really want to do it, mm -hmm. go foot launch, mm -hmm. right? You fly around, have fun, land right there, bolt it back on, drive back over here. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you, these light trikes are really amazing, mm -hmm. you know? And if we can do something that's really easy to, to bolt on just for transportation of mm -hmm. your sure. foot launch machine... From one end of the field to the other, that would be just as good. In fact, I just came up with a design for that. Oh my gosh! <laughs> Seriously, I mean, and and make it still maneuverable even if you're under the track. I mean, literally, you won't even notice that the track is there because mm -hmm. of the materials I'm going to be using. And uh, yeah, you can actually make it to where it licks in, lock, get a curved clop lock. Yeah, actually, you can and you can attach it to the whole thing in a mount. So I had a curious question about that uh, track. If you don't mind, um, oh, go ahead. Are you going to make it uh, possible to where if they have just a single seated trike, can you actually add on a uh, part of a tandem? Yes, something with absolutely. A, with a yeah. Um, again, just like you add on the entire front section where you can have a quad, um, you can actually add on an entire seating section um, with another racing seat, if you will, uh, with a five point harness. And then it extends out. Um, the framework will extend out to that front part. And it's all one unit that you would actually click into the mod. Yeah, I wasn't sure with adding another seat if that would compromise the uh, strength on it if you had to use a different frame. So that's why I was curious about. I mean, that's the reason I'm making it so robust is because I'm already thinking about that. Yeah, yeah that's awesome. Awesome. Yeah, I want to make this um, the ability, you know, keep it kind of a medium weight because there's really no way to make it safe if it's really, really lightweight. Um, so if I'm making it a medium weight with the materials and fabrication techniques that I'm talking about, um, we should be able to just make it simple where you can add on to it with very minimal training. You can add on to it. Um, and then we can even do that over zoom saying, okay, this is where your connection points are. This is how you connect it to make sure these are your torques you're putting on your fasteners. And then to make sure that it's, if you want to adjust it any time in the field, just click it on. Get rocking. Interesting that you just said mods. Mm -hmm. So maybe, maybe you can actually do different. I mean, obviously you have to put on a different plate to put on a different engine. So maybe there's different mods that you can actually put on. So you have your base, your base um, trike mm -hmm. or quad, mm -hmm. and then you put on different mods mm -hmm. for what you want. You're racing, you know, your five point uh, harness, yep. um, retractable seat yep. mod, mm -hmm. your um, quad mod, mm -hmm. your trike mod, sure. you know, your. Yep. Just want to say that 
it's three minutes till I guess eight o'clock in your neighborhood, and you hadn't done the spinning wheel yet. And Will said he had to leave in exactly one hour. Uh oh, all right, let's go ahead and do the spinny <laughs> wheel of windy things. Uh, but before we do that, let's go ahead and get us our our thumbnail. And uh, yeah, oh, yeah, because oh, Linda, she's already blind. She's already blind, so we can do this. And uh, I will do this. Ah, no, I mean, that's scary. No, don't do that. No, do that. <laughs> all right, sounds good. Ready. <laughs> <laughs> all right <laughs> are you ready no <laughs> one two three we got it oh, there, was, there was one thing there was one thing though I, I, john wayne says ham so i'm not sure what that means but i think he's requesting a ham radio on board or He's calling us hams. It could be that too. Yeah. yeah we're hamming it up today. Oh, yeah, we're hamming it up. But wouldn't that ham would be part of your, your helmet, right? Um, there's all, all kinds of, like I said, all kinds of things that we can do. Um, obviously, um, communication installation is really important. Um, I haven't worked that part out because I'm still working on the structural aspect. Um, but all the mods and things like that, all the extras and stuff that we need in order to fly, that will be incorporated with the design. Yes, absolutely. Sweet. This has been a really awesome, awesome podcast. Look how quick that hour went. Yeah, look, how, yeah. look how, yeah. look how it quick went fast. Today. Yeah, they went by so quick. quick. I mean, all they did was dip, 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 yeah. dip, dip, dip. It was great. Heck yeah! Well, I'm like super excited about all the stuff that's that you're doing, Brandon. I mean, I can't stop smiling. You keep talking about doing, you know, different things with the trikes and building trikes, and I'm like, oh my god, this is so Absolutely. awesome. So I can't. Maybe, I, I look forward remember. to next week. <laughs> that's for sure. The remote control trike where you you know you right. sit like Linda in and now you fly Linda around like a RC plane. <laughs> I know, right? I want a transformer trike that I can have a remote and hit the button and watch it unfold and put itself together. Work on that one after the first one there. <laughs> now we're talking now we're talking actuators. Now there. yeah, yeah. oh yeah, gotta this. put an actuator. Might make it a little heavy. <laughs> All right, Linda. How, how heavy you want this thing to be? <laughs> all right. All right, Linda, all you, girl. Okay. All right, I'm going to say hi to all my chatters. Okay, real quick here. Uh, we got John Wayne Cowboy in the house. Ellen Houston, lovely. How are you tonight? Joseph Hudgens. Bill H. Kevin Houston. Yeah, dude. You Autry <laughs> Scuba in the house. Kramer, my lovely Kramer. <laughs> Greg Laney, what's up? We got Mac in the house. Woohoo! Tom Tomlinson, PPG. Welcome, welcome. Tony Marzano, Mr. Vegas in the house. Lovely munchkin. I love you, girl. We got James in the house. Shannon Brooks. Kyle Neal. Angela Presley. Hello, my lovely. The other Nick. Just want to fly. Jade, my girl. How are you, girlfriend? We got PPG Trike Jockey Z. Daniel Sagwell. And next Batman in the house tonight. So, yeah, and uh, shout out to Daniel Sagvold. I guess this is his first time watching, so welcome, man. Oh, welcome, welcome, Daniel. Welcome, welcome. Good luck, oh, chatters. I didn't say Sunday. You know, what was that? That was yesterday when I went flying. We had our, um, it was a paraglider pilot. He took his first PPG flight yesterday, which was awesome, but it was the worst conditions you could have ever launched somebody. With. I wouldn't even go up. Yeah. I was like, really? You're going to put him in the air? Yeah, he's ready. And he did great, but it's it scared the crap out of me. Oh, wow. It was a one-step cool. reverse launch, and the wind was pretty strong at that point, but he, he managed to do fine. Awesome. I'm going to say, Shannon, I think I'm going to say... Oh, you can't say it until it starts spinning. Oh, oh, sorry, oh. sir. I, I, forgot the rules. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot the rules. <laughs> Are you ready? Ready when you yep. are, buddy. All right. I'll say Kyle. Oh, is it I'll spinning say... now? Yep. So it's got it's slow spinning. frame rates. Is it going to um, be? I um, say, I'm going to say what? Mac because he's here and it's rigged. No. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's the most yeah, right. one. It's rigged. It's going to be Mac. It's rigged. Is can it, Linda? I, can is I it say spinning? it now? Can I yeah. say it now, Will? Oh, okay. okay. Sh Shannon Brooks. Welcome, Shannon. Good well, luck. At least two hopefully, times a second. Hopefully, Daniel. You said Daniel was uh, uh, first time here, right? Yes. Yeah. 
So hopefully Daniel, it looks like it is. Is it going to be Daniel? Is it going to be Daniel? Uh, let's keep it going. Oh, uh, oh, Daniel, oh, sure oh. Good to be you, bud. It's getting like, whoa. It's getting like, whoa. And it's still Greg. zipping I'm around. Greg. Is it going to be Greg? It's going to be Greg Laney. Greg the awesome Laney. <laughs> See, it's rigged. It's rigged for Greg. There you go. <laughs> so, Greg, um, all you have to do is get up with Ron over at Lone Star Paramotor. So, uh, you can email him, Ron at Lone Star Paramotor.com. Let him know that you won uh, something on PPG Grandpa's Paramotor podcast or Clear Prop TV, and he will send something out to you. Yeah, just go, hey, Ron, I won something. Listen. I want something. I, I think I it's a paramotor. paramotor. <laughs> yeah, I think it's a paramotor. And if you're down in the, the Lone Star area, if you want to get good training, yeah. uh, go down and check out LoneStarParamotor.com. I think I want a paramotor on the spinning wheel. Yeah, I want a paramotor. <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't free training down there. Come on over. We'll, we'll find out what you want. Yeah, okay. We'll give you 10% off. Very All right. cool. Sounds good. Very and cool. Will Fly, unfortunately, has to head on out. So, Will, thank you so much for everything that you do. Uh, thank not you, only Will. The spinny Will of Winnie Things uh, God over here, but he is also the treasurer of our nonprofit organization, Run to the Sky. So, thank you very much, Will, for everything you do, buddy. You're welcome, thank man. You, and a couple of shout outs. If uh, you live in the Southeast, check out our. Uh, paramotor page at southeast paramotor and if you want to check out my videos you can search youtube for will fly or online will fly ppg.com it's been a pleasure guys okay. matt thanks man really appreciate it hey uh, will is there will, is there will. a show tomorrow night will yeah, oh thank you thank you thank you yes tomorrow night okay. uh eight o'clock on youtube to get to it you go to ppgshane.com okay. we talk paramotors but that's not all we talk and we don't have any idea until <laughs> we start talking what the topic's going to be. So join us and okay. love to add. Eight o'clock okay. Central Standard Eastern. 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 Yeah, eight so seven, so seven o'clock Central, right? Is that how seven it works? Central, six o'clock, what? Mountain, five o'clock. What is it? Pacific. <laughs> but it's recorded. So if you miss it, you can still watch. Okay. Good, because I got a good funny for Shaney tomorrow night. I want to save it. I'm you know how I think of these little joke things. So I got a good one for him tomorrow. <laughs> we all have fun. Good night. Yeah, Bye. All right. Well, thank you very much, buddy. Appreciate you. Yeah, did buddy. you line up your tandem flight yet? Yeah. Linda. 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 Huh? Linda? What? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. It's all set up. Yeah. Oh, awesome. So you are going to get to fly. Cool. I was, oh, they I was got me first. covered, dude. I got family. You know, I got my Jade and my Eric. I know They're, people they and stuff. They took care of me. They took care of me. They got a nice. hold of Alexis and we're, we're good. We're good. Yay. So the weather cooperates and everything. Yeah, I'm not I worried. I feel bad for her. She gets to fly once a year and she was not going to be able to this year. And I'm like, damn, that sucks. But yeah, now she gets to. So cool. Oh yeah, and well, Bonnie, like I told you, Bonnie and Brian are going to be there, so Bonnie's going to do the, take do the videos and everything. Oh, so, awesome, awesome! Yeah, she's going to be my camera girl and all that stuff. So I'm, I know I already was talking yesterday to my daughter in law about you know packing the cooler, what we're going to put in the cooler for the day, and this and that, because they're just going to my son, they're just going to drop me off for the day, let me run rampant, you know. It'll be fun. It'll be a lot of fun. I'm looking forward to it. As long as the weather cooperates, right? So, um, yeah. Well, on one of the see. days it will, at least for five minutes or 20. <laughs> it'll be it'll be a lot of fun. Very cool. Well, I'm glad you uh you did okay, Scuba. Yeah. Don't scare us like that. Oh, uh, the takeoff was scary, but I mean, uh, it was a quick fix. Thank goodness. Um, the yeah. landing went great, though. That was the first time I landed, you know, because I've only that was my second flight on the trike. The first one was a bad landing because I almost hit my truck. And the second one was nice and smooth, so that, that yeah. felt way better landing that way. <laughs> I thought you were trying out fancy maneuvers up there at first, and I'm like, oh, whoa, no, no, that. it's because because that brake was caught and it was pulling so hard. So when I let it go, it instantly swung back the other way. So you could see me oscillate when I first took off. Yeah. Then it straightened yeah. out. <gasps> that was a bleeping moment. That's yeah, all I'm going to say. It was, <laughs> a, it was a pucker moment for me. 
<laughs> That's okay. No, I'm I'm super excited about all this. Really am. Oh, Six weeks for a prototype, man. I'm wait. I can't wait to see what he comes up with. This is I know. I'm not sure yet. Um, I've already been <laughs> on it for well since I started taking a look at him in March. Right. Yeah, been about a month. Yeah. So I've already got, like I said, two two it's two up. designs worked it's out. Up. Doing the last parts to the design work. I've already yeah. done the um the uh, materials allocation. Um, now I'm actually getting the tooling and everything. I'm buying lathes and all the other stuff I need to in order to fabricate. So, yep. nice. Yep, yep. So I like um, it. Yeah, it's gonna be fun. It's gonna be fun. I'm looking forward to it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Me too. Because I have a, <laughs> I have a 3,500 foot runway that I can go try this track on <laughs> to figure out what works and what doesn't. <laughs> and plot about cool. 20, no 134 acres um, at the drop zone that I work at. Yeah in order to try and test you know, really cool yeah it's going to be freaking awesome so and we and and because it's north texas i mean the, the ground cracks open a lot so i'll be able to try out the suspension and stuff working there so it's actually a pretty good test ground to be able to work it with so yeah so i'm looking very forward nice to, and i'll be giving y'all updates over time so let you know how it's all coming out and you know and uh and then i again did we get much response on patent it or not yeah, did what would they say about as far as open source or patent? They didn't really nobody said much. Once we started to talk about China and stuff, I mean Yeah. It's yeah. if they're gonna copy it, they're gonna copy it anyway. But yeah. yeah, I mean that's clearly up to you guys, you know, whether you patent it or not. But yeah, we'll they'll see. just change there's one thing, like you said, and then patent it for themselves. Oh no, it's a whole new design because we put different bolts on our wheels yeah but i and i think you're correct i think putting you know made in the usa on various components is going to make a big difference on on how it goes here in the u.s because yeah i think i think a lot of people are tired of getting products i mean is it easy convenient things like that yeah but when you're talking life-saving gear i i wouldn't get it from china yeah no we already saw the aliexpress yeah mm, no so and i mean all my skydiving gear is made here in the usa handmade so it was worth every bit that I put into it. I've spent ten thousand dollars just on my skydiving gear. And that's just one rig. So, you know, that's crazy. But it is what it is. I mean, you know, I don't go, I'm not gonna go into details about what it is, but um building something like this and making it cost effective for people is is a huge it's gonna be fun building it. Because, yeah, yeah. Because yeah, it's gonna it be makes, fun flying it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, because the materials, uh well, I guess it doesn't matter how much it costs, but let's just say that yeah, it's gonna be it's it's still gonna be cost effective and be robust and everything I, that you want to do. I've thought about building a trike, but there is because I, I was like, you know what? I'll just go around the neighborhood and people that throw metal and stuff away, I'll just get all this metal. No metal is safe in my neighborhood. Right. If it's on the street longer than five minutes, it's gone. Yeah. There's sure. a guy that's like roams. I don't know. That I, I put something on the street. And by the time I turn around, it's gone. It's like, what in the hell, dude? They're fast. Yeah. Hey, Kyle, is there anything else in the super chat? Uh, yeah. A little while back, uh, Kramer did ask a question for you, sir. He said, uh, can you design a trailer that hooks on the back of a trike so I can carry my wing out to the field? I have a 31 meter Mac para charger and it's too big to carry in my lap. Hmm. Oh, like a trailer yeah. that'll hook to the paramotor, like just a little caddy behind it with like a little almost like a wheelbarrow so you could throw your your wing but, in but you got a prop spinning though actually what i'm going to be designing is i've noticed that sometimes um that people will actually clamp it onto the framework itself um the bag will be clamped onto the framework um so i'm going to have um either it's going to be clamped on here or it's going to be above the hell? Um, because with that we're also going to be running ductwork into the engine itself for better cooling um and and a few other different design prototypes that I'm working to try to minimize the amount of failures because of overheating and at altitude. Um, Had a bug that dive bombed me. I saw that. <laughs> so it's that hair. Yeah, if it's a 31 <laughs> meter wing, and she's probably got a pretty big sack. So it, yeah, it would sit like, especially if you had a dual whole frame, it could just literally sit on top. That's the idea. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And I mean, what we could do is develop a suspension system, like a netting that goes over the top part of it so that right. she can actually put that on top, you know, like a kind of a hammock type netting 
so All that right. they can actually put their put their, um, their wing bag and everything on top there. And then when they get to where they are, then they can actually just take all that stuff down and, you know. Hey, it. tomorrow, let's um, let's look at these trucks that we have and see what we could do as far as like putting something on there that could hold the wing bag. Because I never thought about, you know, it's difficult for some people to hold that wing bag because I just throw it on my lap and I just go drive. OK, so here's the idea. You can go to your motorcycle shop. Mm -hmm. And they have these um, bungee nets that go over the back seat of the motorcycle. Right. You can take that because it has big, big C clips that are on there, right? Polymer clips. And you can stretch that across the top part of your, your trike. Especially if you have an open, especially have an open frame where the, the frame comes down sideways, you can put that on top and then put your parachute on top or put the wing on top of that. That's the design idea. Let's, let's yeah, yeah, we're gonna yeah tomorrow tomorrow we're gonna look at um at our at the trikes that we have here yeah and our quads that one worked there and kind of I guess there. we'll try to figure that out because yep. already got it yep he got it obviously yeah. but I don't I think I need more sleep because all the half the crap that you're saying today goes whoosh, I tried to keep it out whoosh. of the Greek. you said you like Greek <laughs> I like Greek yogurt. <laughs> you're gonna get so many ideas you're gonna have too much stuff on that freaking frame <laughs> uh, no no actually um the critical part is of course the balance um but other yeah. than that you know, i've been i've been designing and engineering things for a very long time um and, and i put i've learned to compartmentalize um to kind of work at different ideas and different things along the path of my actually developing the prototypes oh, so good um, I'm, I fabricated overland trailers. Um, like I said, I, my, I retired five years ago and built my own over, overland trailer to go anywhere that I want it to go. And I just enjoy designing things. So I do it all the time. So don't worry about the overload. I'm really, I'm really excited on getting this done because I think it's for a great, great reason. I yeah. really do. And, um, because the sky isn't just meant for people that are completely able. It's meant for everybody. It is, you know, not just to look up at, not to just wonder about but to be a part of it. You know, I, I went to get my hair cut yesterday and these two guys, it's funny because you got a paramotor on the back of your car. Everybody's got to come and ask you what the hell is that, blah, blah, blah. But this yeah. guy pulled up in his wheelchair. I've, I've seen disabled people before, but I was like, man. And he said it was a motorcycle accident, but he was missing both of his legs at the kneecap. Every one of his fingers were nubs, except okay. for his left thumb. That's all he had was his left thumb. And he said he was having a bad day because he had a splinter in that thumb and had to go to the hospital to get it removed. So he had oh. no way. He can't even grab the splinter out. He had to go to the hospital. I'm like, yeah. dude, that sucks. And yeah, it, it, it was. And so I could, you know, I was like, I wonder if he's, you know, interested in the fly. I don't think he was, but it was just sad to see that he was in bad shape. Whatever I could, is. I could actually develop something for him. I, I would think. I mean, because he's he's still got fingers. It's just he doesn't have his whole fingers. He had nubs, you know. But as long he can, as he can hold that that throttle, even with that thumb, we can modify it to make it to where it works like that, and put a cam throttle cam throttle on it. And also, too, yeah. if we can, you know, we can put some sort of glove on yeah, there too. That can help. Yeah, and then have it wrist strapped on. Yeah, there you Absolutely. go. Hence the sewing. Hello. <laughs> Once again, right. right. So. Um, and then for his turning, because he's he's got it cut off at the knees. Yeah, uh, the knees, yeah. he has. Use of does he have use of both arms? Yes. Okay, so we could actually make it to where his hands hold on to the brakes, and have it clipped on. If he doesn't can't use his fingers, and we can make it to where the gloves themselves will actually clip onto your brakes mm -hmm. using magnets and or something of that nature. And then he can use his body shift in order to steer the track. Or since we're going to be developing a self-steering track, what the self-steering means is that if you need to go left, you pull left on your brake. As long as your pair, as long as your wing is up, you pull left on the brake, and the track naturally moves left. Same thing if you pull right, it naturally moves right. It must be an engineer or something. <laughs> I don't know. I'm still, I'm still learning. <laughs> But yeah, so it's going to be fun. And the biggest challenge, of course, is, and yes, I've already got an idea about having bigger tires on it, um, which is why I'm coming to like a middle ground for the tire. It's going to be, um, it's going to be one that you can inflate. Yes, but it's also going to be on a mag wheel. So it's going to look really sharp because I mean, 
you imagine flying into um, any kind of event or whatever. And of course, people are naturally going to come up and talk to you. But when you have something that's really slick and something that's personally yours, and, really, and really spinners, and right? Spinners. Scuba oh. spinners, right? Yeah. Spinners. And then it's going to have breaks. Oh, speaking of which, what do y'all think? And that's this is a question that I had earlier that I, I really would like for y'all to answer. Um, what do y'all think is more important on a trike, front brake or back brakes? Or any brakes at all? Brakes are yep. good because some people do land near heels or something. Um, yep. even even the point to where you could push the brake and then push a pin to lock the brake so that it can stay on an incline or something. Yep. Because, you know, we're, we're, just talk, we're just talking about that too. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And then, okay, cool. And yeah, it, and I think it's better for the back because if you do the front brake and then say you get somebody to get scared and all of a sudden slams on the brake and it's a front brake, they're going to flip the trike up in the air. I mean, rear, you're in good shape there. So Agreed. So, so guys in the super chat, if you want to you know, weigh in, Please do so. And if you guys see any of these uh, um, uh, things in the Super Chat, let us know. We can't see the Super Chat right now. Hey, Kyle, speaking about the Super Chat, is there anything else in the Super Chat before we keep on going on? Uh, yeah, actually, Tony Marzano did actually bring up a question. Uh, interesting at that. He said, it sucks that we're buying Italian motors. How about U USA motor? How would that work? Well, we, I mean, we wouldn't be able to manufacture the motors, right? Manufacturing engines and things like that takes a lot of R&D with a lot of more resources. Um, I know that there are manufacturers here in the U.S. that are working on that problem. Um, and But I, I mean, as far as like prototypes, I couldn't tell you who they are. Um, I have a few ideas, but um, again, until I know something for certain, I'm not going to give you all any information about that. So it'd probably um, be something more along the line of the designs that are out there that are good, mm -hmm. like the most are like the, the Viterazzi, Viterazzi's most are 25, the Adam 80s. Yeah, we know they work the Cosmo 300s, mm -hmm. right? They we know that they work and there's parts everywhere for mm -hmm. them, you know, and a lot of people are using them. So mm -hmm. it, it'd be like, let's let's put together something that's uh made in the USA, but sure, where's the parts? Mm -hmm. We don't have millions of dollars to do what Viterazzi is sure. doing over in Italy. And and one thing I'm also looking at as well as I've you know, as we're talking about it, it's like oh, we can get in contact with Honda, Kawasaki, Yamaha, stuff like that in order to see if a two cycle engine that they produced may actually work for our purposes. Because, I mean, the the whole thing is it's a it's power to weight ratio. Right. Well, imagine a 250 yeah, Harley cc. To build it. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> Make it really American. Harley, <laughs> right. There you go. How about a Ford two stroke? <laughs> mm, no, I'm good do you guys, that. do you guys want a Ford two stroke <laughs> or maybe a Chevy two Damn stroke? Freaking old rebuild that. No, we're staying away from that. On her. Everybody's <laughs> saying back brakes. By the way, rear brake, rear brake, back, back brakes. brakes. That's what I'm yeah. thinking too. Um, yeah, and I'm gonna make some very lightweight uh, disc brakes. Um, not drum brakes, but disc brakes, so that they clear debris and anything that could possibly get in the way. Um, so single actuating. It only one actuator. In order to like, I haven't decided whether it's your foot or whether it's something else um, that actually locks it into place. But I'm thinking to keep it natural, it's probably going to be like a foot on the front, um, either left or right, since our brake is typically activated with the left foot. Is that right? No, it's always the right. So the point is, is right. that the accelerator and the brake is activated, so it may actually go on the right foot. I haven't decided that. So okay, so another question. For oh, the, it's raining. Let is me... it? Oh, go ahead, man. I'm gonna shut that. Go ahead. Okay, right foot or left foot. Yeah, see, I know we use our right foot for a brake. You technically, if you're driving, unless you're a woman, you usually use just your right foot for gas and brake. <laughs> but <laughs> I know, like, if you're riding a go kart, left foot is brake, right foot is gas. And it would feel more like you were in a go kart, I think, in a trike. So you would want to use your left foot. It's just what my feeling is, but other people may okay. feel different about that. I would probably have it universal where they can move it over in case somebody has just one foot, you know, they're missing one leg. Yeah. That way they can move it over to their Absolutely. side. I think that would be the, the best. Bar and that's the beauty. Yeah. Yeah. Something like that. Um, but really it'd be just a, a pivot point that actually would just change over. Um, and that's the beauty of having rear brakes as opposed to front brakes is I can switch it from either side. So, um, uh, yeah, absolutely. Okay. So rear brakes, it is, um, that there won't be differential braking, which means you can't hit the brake and then turn left or hit the brake and turn right. If you hit the brakes, it's going to stop the whole track. Okay. Gotcha. So um, that makes it much safer and 
Yeah. <laughs> Much easier, especially since it's the, the idea is to have it as a, you know, a self-steering type track anyway. Um, okay. So that answers that question. Great. Um, as far as a harness connection is concerned, really haven't thought about putting any harnesses on there because this is really not going to be a weight shift, weight shift type principle. Um, but anything's possible, especially when we're talking about the one where you're going to attach your motor and your harness into the frame itself. Yeah. Yeah. On the, on the standalones where you're adding your own paramotor, I could see that being, you know, but on the one that you're building, you know, with the basically a racing seat and a five point harness, then you won't need a regular paramotor harness. You'll be using that racing seat right. and the five point harness. So you're good there. That's correct. Yep. Especially if you can recline it and then, you know, you won't have to be able to slide it front and back because your front feet will be adjustable. So you already got that figured out. So that way the center of gravity stays pretty consistent. Exactly. Yep. Yeah. So, and that's the whole idea behind that, as opposed to trying to make it where so many things are adjustable. Yeah. Um, keep it as simple as possible. So uh, let's see. Anything else? Well, actually, one uh, Tony also made another mention that's something else. Would you be uh, willing to do a gas pedal uh, throttle as well for somebody that would have a disability that would need something like that? If 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 uh, if they have a disability, yes, I could see where that would be easy in manufacture. Yes, because I mean, just like you have. Your right side, you know, for your gas and your left side technically would be for your brake as you do in go-karts and whatnot. Um, then, yes, that would be totally doable. Absolutely. Um, the design implementation is not complicated. All we do is change where the cable goes to, where it's connected to, and just simply have a lever in order to create that kind of friction. Now, the downside with having a pedal for gas is that most of the places we land are not very smooth. And because of that reason, your foot will constantly be bouncing on that. Even with good suspension, your feet will be following the actual wheel itself. So that, all that vibration will be going into your um, throttle, okay? Um, and that's another thing. I know that a lot of people don't lubricate their throttle cables, and mm -hmm. I highly recommend from an a and point of view that you need to lubricate your throttle cables. Yeah, I, I know a lot of people probably look at four-wheelers four and go, why do they make that thumb throttle like that? That's because in a four-wheeler, you're going over all them bumps. If you had the regular pull throttle, you would just hit more gas every time you hit a bump. And you'd be flying into a tree. <laughs> yeah. Especially when you're standing up. Because, I mean, people stand up to do their, let their legs take most of the shock. So if right. you get that constantly doing this, then you're going to be like Tourette's on a quad. So it's like, <laughs> exactly. and then the making it fluid to be able to get up into the air, all the, all the motions have to be fluid and you put on everything at the same time in order to get up into the air. And if you have that, that foot cable, especially whenever you start taking off and that your, your trike is doing this number right here, then your foot has a potential with the weight shift to be able to do your throttling like this, which could make a very dangerous situation. So I've looked at that obviously, um, but I don't recommend it, but there's other ways to create a throttle potential for it um like i said we have a bite throttle that can be that can work for someone who has a disability and can't use their hands to do so um and there's also other different ways in order to make a throttle that won't be a problem it'll take some special training for the majority of throttle ideas in order to work properly um but i'm sure that if the person has the determination to get in the air they'll, they'll be able to accept the training so drive and, train what huh uh, Tony's saying, I'm thinking of drivetrain, make it happen. Well, drivetrain, why would you? No, no. <laughs> drivetrain? What do you mean drivetrain? I, that's what I'm wondering. I guess he's thinking about, because I was like, yeah, I, I'm thinking he's to be able to transfer the energy of the prop into the wheels, but you don't need that because the prop's already pushing you forward. You don't need any kind of drivetrain unless you need reverse or something i guess <laughs> and you're talking you're talking about in order for a drivetrain on all the gearing and even if you use a slip yoke or you use a um a belt you're talking about so much more different types of materials to withstand the torque that's necessary to drive that down the road yeah. and you're going to lose a ton of horsepower out of your engine and the engines just aren't designed for that right now, because you, in order to get a drivetrain, you're talking a full full fledged transmission. You're talking about a lot of extra weight, and we will go up to the 250 mark, yeah. 250 pound mark if you have a thing, and that's just not feasible. I mean, no airplane has a drivetrain on it. You know, I mean, <laughs> I've never seen one that has a drivetrain. Do they have driving or flying tanks? No. 
So, so I know it's a little extreme thinking, but no, it's not <laughs> really effective to make that work. No. So interesting thought though, but. <laughs> so I got a question for you for a, for a paramotor, as far as mounting, uh, have you considered doing a uh, quick connect? I guess is the word yeah. I'm thinking of. Or you talking about it to hook up your hook on your own foot launch system? Uh, well, I'm I'm referring on the on the trike, you know, like uh, the Kangook, it's actually bolted down. And don't get wrong, I'm not trying to bash it, but for me, I don't like how it's mounted. It I like something that's actually more quicker, but it's still safe, of course. And I was just curious, curious how you'd mount the frame to the trike, um, in that perspective. The frame to the trike. Well, so like I was talking to Scuba. The trike that that's piqued my interest is called an Air One, which unfortunately it's, it wouldn't be as sturdy as what yours is. But they basically have these little quick connects that just clamp over the frame and lock in with that extra safety. And as far as taking your your um, paramotor off the trike, it it's like two minutes. It so you're talking two about minutes. a paramotor on a light trike. Yeah. Are you talking about removing the motor off of the trike? Uh, no, no, removing the, the paramotor itself from the trike. Uh, yes, so that's going to be part of this design. I wasn't sure I if it's like, going to be hard mounted for it. Yeah, it's that's already part of the, that's already part of the design so that you can actually fold it up. Okay. As, now, as far as folding it up, would it be able to fit in like a trunk of a car, or is that that depends on the size of your car? <laughs> See, I got Altima. See, for me, I don't I don't have a truck, so I would need something that would be able to fold down, just shoving my car. Would, you be, able, would you be able to do do something like um if like like a car, right? If you have a one of those little small racks on the back of a car, right? Um, could you put something on that in your trunk and your back seat? Could you could you break it down into different pieces? Sure. Well, and, um, how, again, I'm the first this prototype is to is to be robust. The second one that we'll build. Will actually be a bit smaller for that reason. Same design, but using slightly lighter materials, so it can or in small, so that I can make it a bit smaller to fit other things. But right now, we're building the first prototype in order to work out all the little bells and whistles, all the little bugs that could possibly be in it, um, to make it strong and safe. Um, and I'm going to be the test pilot. Oh, I got. So, the, oh, come on. I got the come same. On, I want to um, be the test pilot. You have to drive down <laughs> um, okay, I can do that. Can do that. Yeah, I can do that. Kyle, I got the same basic trike. Kangook, I agree with you. I don't like the way you have to bolt it down. I did see this frame when I was at Fly Up for Gage. I love this design. I want some mounts like that. Ooh, so, that is nice. So yeah. what that is yeah, basically, I can't see. We can't really see what that is. You oh, I see what you're talking about now. Okay, see, those yes, pins are push-button pins. You literally lay your frame down in there and slide those pin in, and you're done. Which, technically, those yep. mounts would work on our trike. We just have, we just need those mounts made just like that, and they will fit right on that Gangook trike. <laughs> yeah, um, I'm not going to give away the, the mounting process just yet because I'm still working it out, but it's going to be really easy. There's to lock it in place and it will be a secured lock. Yes, I see what you're talking about. Yeah, I was just showing yeah, them up. And that well, moves back. Picture. Different things. Yeah, sure. yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, and yes, totally going to be making, and those are called cam throw locks. And cam throw locks can be made to where they both maneuver side to side and throw over latch and then lock it down. Yes, absolutely oh. easy. Yeah. So, yes. And, but the, the, the hmm. idea that I have. To, of the engine itself is well i'm not going to say what it is cause, because cause I'm removing, still on removing it, so. an engine removing yeah. so so the difference is just so we're all on the same page we're removing an engine from the frame itself mm -hmm. right which is different from just uh removing the paramotor from a light trike right like what Two that's totally going. different things yeah so if you're talking about removing an engine from a trike a light trike which is what you showed me um then that's easy to do um that design that he that you just showed me yes totally doable um so when we do the light version of it that where you can put your own paramotor on top of that with the 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 loop and everything on it yet it will lock in and be solid um but when we're talking about the larger trike uh the mid-range trike i'll call it um 
it's going to have a different system for being able to remove the actual engine so that you can remove the engine and stow it or put it in a different location than where the track fits into. So then you can take it out, set your track up, reattach your engine, bring it up, lock it in, you're ready to fly. Because there's quick release, um, there's quick releases for your fuel lines also. So you can just twist it and pop it. So there's quick release fuel line. Mm -hmm. Yep. A lot of things we're still working out on the design idea, but yeah. Yeah. So, um, and again, uh, over time, I will show you exactly what I'm building um, and how it's progressing. Um, and then you can give me more input and things like that about ideas that you may have that I haven't thought of yet. Okay. Awesome. So the, the idea is to make it modular and make it easy to assemble. I'm, I'm trying to get it to where you can assemble the whole thing in less than five minutes. Yeah, that, that's something I would definitely love is something that's quick and easy. I ain't going to bring out a lot of tools and start fidgeting with it. And that, that's what I'm looking for. The whole point is to not even have to use a tool. Right. And that, that, that's, that's what awesome. I want. Okay. That's awesome. Yeah. That's because why I, mean, I like those slide pins. It's literally push button, push button, you're done. Yeah. It's like, yeah. that's what I want. Click, click. Okay, now I can ride my trike or I can take, take them off. Boom, foot yeah. launch, you know. And I know that one's later for you, and but still. <laughs> well, there, there are to get to that point. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that there's actually a, I call it the aviation Bible, which has, it's about this thick, about that tall. And it's written like a Bible, both front and back with that kind of writing that talks about the different fasteners that are used in aviation. And I'll be applying that book in order to work with this to make it efficient and effective for all the different types of fasteners that are in existence. Okay. So, and then probably manufacturing my own, to be honest with you. Um, something that's quick, something that's secure, something that's proven, um, just probably a little more robust so that it locks everything into place. Mm -hmm. So, it's a joy of being a machinist. I can make it anywhere I want it, I want to. So, okay. Hey, any more questions? Any questions from the panel? Any questions in the super chat? At the moment, I haven't seen any. This was uh, great. Greg, uh, Greg did say he did like the uh, LED light idea. However, an accessible switch to turn the lights on, in case you forgot, also a dashboard to click your phone would be nice. Yep. I thought that'd be an easy, yep. easy mod to put in there, of course. I'm trying to, I'm trying to, the idea again is to, once it's all set up, all you've got to do is get in the thing, connect your helmet, turn it on, get your wing attached, and sayonara. All your radios are already there. All your your light switches, your battery setups, any kind of power that you want to it, you know, to run all your gauges, your indicators, anything like that to keep you f safer in the air is the idea and what we'll be working in order to. Well, that's a smart idea too. We're, we're just talking about mods. Mm -hmm. You can take your you know um, battery packs and slide them into something, and your your uh, your I guess your wires are already where they need to be instead of running wires and That's stuff. Correct. You just slide in your battery pack and then you just plug in your helmet yep. or plug in your whatever. Like and that. the wires will be run the wires will be hidden. Mm -hmm. It's not going to be anything that's external. A lot, a ton of external wiring are actually going to be hidden in the frame itself. Uh, oh. Very professional type installation with all kinds of activation buttons and, and the whole panel board, anything, and a big old or a manual in order to, to show you how to run the thing. Um, easy to produce, um, especially with all the AI technology we have nowadays. So right. doing a manual in order to help someone get started with it without a whole lot of um, hands-on or me being there to help them set it up is the goal. That's the thing, too. I, I, there's a lot of paramotors out there without any manual at all. That's you have correct. no idea how to yep. you get them in a box. And it's like, well, I think this piece goes here. Yep. And the thing that ticks me off the most when I see something that's supposed to be built in the USA right. um, is you look at the manual for installation and it has all kinds of misspelled words <laughs> that sound like, like you like, know, no, install the bolt into the housing <laughs> or something crazy like right. that. You can tell it's not even written in the United States. Right, yeah. So that that bothers me. So I wanted y'all to know that whenever I, you know, as we do this and I'll be writing down every part of the instruction and then transferring that into an actual manual. Excellent. So, uh, actually, I got a question, and forgive me if you've already said it, I, mean, I might have missed it, but okay. um, what kind of warranty will be coming on these trikes if there's any amount, I mean, any uh, errors, maybe a weld that's got a didn't stick or something? Does it come with a good warranty for just basic wear and tear? Or is that Fascinating. something? Fascinating. Uh, 
Interesting. That's that's definitely something we have not yeah. been talking. We haven't about. discussed that really, because mm-hmm. um, the whole idea in the beginning is to make it. I mean, granted, it's a machine. Can it fail? Yes, um, because that's just the nature of machining things, and it also depends on age and things like that. But I'll tell you this: from what I've seen, um, from some of the other tracks and things like that have been built. What I'm, what I have planned, and what I am, what I am going to be building is going to be so far beyond what their capabilities are. Um, that when you receive the machine, uh, you're going to know that you have a quality product and having an actual written guarantee, I guarantee if you don't crash it, it's not going to break. <laughs> yeah, I, mean, I, I was just, you know, I'm trying to make sure everybody knows uh, something like that, of course, because, you know, not having a warranty for just not for neg- negligence can really help out a decision sure. buying something like that. Yeah, I understand. Um, We'll have to work that one out. Yeah. Um, first, if we're going to warranty it, as opposed to doing, if I'm doing an open source type deal, there's mm-hmm. no warranty um, because that's something that you're taking upon yourself in order to build it um, using the plans and things like that, that I've furnished um, right. as like something I'm building myself um, in order for me to send it out with a warranty, then the majority of it will have to be built at my location. And then you'll have to just do a few, a few other things. Um and then other than that, you know, I'll have to actually talk with a lawyer in order to figure out what the warranty class would be. Um, so there's a lot of other fa- a lot of other things that have to take place before that even comes into play. Right. So, but it is something I can put on the plate, um, but it's not something I'm even thinking about connecting with right now. Because again, we're, as it's been explained to me many, many times as I'm talking <laughs> this or AMP that for a part 103 type situation, um, this is part 103. And I don't like this excuse um, because, I mean, you can home build this. There's no regulation for anybody to build anything like this, um, and there's no standard. So um, having a warranty um, could be at both a plus and a negative. And again, I don't haven't explored that part yet. A war- so, warranty would be like if there's anything wrong with it and you didn't crash it, mm-hmm. we'll take care of it. Obviously. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, yeah, that's not- what I was referring to. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. So if it comes there and something. Things broken, we'll send you another yeah. piece. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah if you're yeah. missing bolts, that's... we'll send you some bolts. That type of thing. If so... you're talking about that kind of stuff, I mean, yeah, obviously, that, that's kind of what I was referring to as a warranty. If, if yeah, 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 yeah. All right. Because um, I kind of go when you're talking about warranties and stuff. There's a lot of legalities that have to follow a warranty. Um, and because we're talking about, you know, it, it, there's now granted for the most part, people just want to get up in the air and they want to enjoy things. But you also have those people that want to get it and then they want to try to get a whole new assembly because something wasn't right and whereas that's really not that big of a deal that's not what i'm in this for i'm in this to help people and if you have some part that's not quite 100 percent, but i promise if it, before it leaves here it will be 100 percent, and it will be assembled completely and it will have everything with it because it'll be assembled for you know assembled and taken apart before it ships mm-hmm. um it's just that simple um because as i build it i assemble it so, and again, if, if a part does break for whatever reason, um, then yeah, it's, it's replaceable. That's the whole point of why I'm designing it the way I am. Um, and as long as you follow my directions, um, cause if you, okay. And probably one of the things I may do that I'm thinking about it is if you get a part, or if you, you say, okay, this is wrong or this is bad, then I'm going to request a zoom call. We're going to look at that part and see exactly how bad it is and see what I can do to either make it right or whatnot. Just kind of all kinds of ideas to go with the whole warranty idea, but I'm not opposed to it. I just have to see. And now remember that as an engineer, um, there's a lot of things that cover um, the engineering aspect of it, a lot of legalities that go with it too. So just remember that. Um, so I'll be making this as robust as I possibly can and still be an effective and efficient trike. Okay. Sounds good. I know things that we didn't talk about mm. today was warranties. Nope, didn't even think about it. And stuff like that. And price yep. points is like, all we're thinking about is how can we make a mm. robust machine yep. that works well, mm-hmm. that um, that will help uh, a lot of people get into the sky yep. and, you know, just be an all around good machine, you know, very good quality. Mm-hmm. Didn't even think about the warranty. Nope. But, so I uh, actually, I got a question of my own here. Actually, it's kind of a silly question, but out of curiosity. So I was thinking about one of our students who is crutches. Mm-hmm. What would happen if he wanted the uh, roll cage, you know, over, over that? Could we actually make it to where that can actually kind of detach partially, let him get in and then come back down and lock in? Or would that oh, be- I, I, 
I I know what you're talking about. You're talking about like when you go into a amusement park and you go yes. in and, and uh, do a roller coaster and they bring that thing down and over you, right? Is that what you're talking yes. about? Yes, basically same concept. I was wondering, like for me, I'm a bigger guy, and if I had a track like that, I would love to have row cage like the uh, the red one over there. I love it, but for me, for being a bigger guy, it's actually a little difficult for me to get in there and uncomfortable. I love I love, I love how it sets in, but getting in and out is I'm not elegant at all. So I was just wondering like, if something like that would be possible with that build. Well, that we talked about, um, you know, well, the open it's, concept. It's going to be an open roll cage. And the very front, it's you're not going to have anything obscuring your view, okay? Um, and the, especially the view straight forward. It's going to be open, so you, all you got to do is just get in. It's very straightforward, very simple. Um, and it's going to be like a chair with the roll cage that goes from side to side. That's the idea at the moment, okay? So you don't, you don't have a problem getting in, especially for someone with the uh, – matter of fact – especially with someone that has those kind of you know crutches or whatnot it'll be really easy to get into and then their feet will lock into place on the actual front part of the trike if they say they've got limited use of their legs we can design it to where um with a self-steering trike that their feet can just rest up in a certain place so it's open in the front kyle like um like blue but it's gonna be comfortable like red mm -hmm. And you guys are both like, what are you talking about, blue and red? Well, we have different trikes with different uh, colors, and we refer to them as the colors. Yep. So um, you've been over here, Kyle. You know what I'm talking about. So blue has an open oh, yeah. cockpit, but red is the most comfortable uh, paramotor oh, oh, trike yes. that, that I've is, ever uh, been in my life. Mm -hmm. And you you like it too, right? Yeah. yeah. My favorite. Yeah. Um, and the seats I'm talking about will be actually very plush, um, and there'll be kind of coming around, but you can get different sizes, different widths of the seating and everything. If you have a plus size recommendation or requirement, then we can actually get the seats to fit you. Awesome. Yeah, too. Mm -hmm. Yep. So, and, and I've already thought about how to get it in. Matter of fact, I designed a, um, I designed actually a trike that would, someone can actually pull back on their wheelchair, lock it in, lift it up. And now their wheelchair is part of their seating system in the trike. That would be nice. Mm -hmm. Only if they have a very comfortable wheelchair, because yeah, it would be mostly for not, racing. <laughs> wheelchairs they, are not comfortable. If they have the the like, uh, well, and, and you could make it obviously engineer it to different types of wheelchairs. So right. again, it also depends. There's all kinds of the, the, and the reason I bring that up is to let you know there's all kinds of the dynamics that we can work into. It's not secluded into just one dogmatic design. Um, it's going to be we can customize it any way that we need to. So how about you customize a wheelchair that actually is part of that design? Sure. So you just, so that's part of the design. You unclip it mm -hmm. and now, you know, you go over, you yeah. get your whoever, they sit in it and now you bring them back and actually set them in. So, yeah. so the wheelchair is actually part of the trike. Easy. Quad. There you go. Easy. That's, that's yeah. better than trying to come up with something that is sure. more of a standard for all the different type of wheelchairs um, yeah. out there. Mm -hmm. So that's cool. Making your own wheelchair. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. See, and that's why we're doing this. It, it just is really cool because the more we talk about it, the more design concepts happen. The more people we have out here that you know try to do this, the more we're like, oh, okay. So this guy wants to take his, his uh, crutches and stow them mm -hmm. on his trike or mm -hmm. quad, and you already said that's no problem. No they problem. can stow it. Yep. And then there's people with wheelchairs, so we can build one that actually has a wheelchair that mm -hmm. detaches and attaches. Sure. I've yeah. seen, uh, they've already designed this, but it's a, um, basically if you're in a wheelchair, it's like this little one wheel you pull up to, it's electric, and your wheelchair clicks right into it, then you got electric wheelchair. Freaking yeah. awesome. That is good. <laughs> that is good. Yeah, not bad, not bad. So yeah, the, the only difference, I guess, between that one and this one is this one take you to the sky. <laughs> <laughs> uh, among other things, of course. But yeah, th there's unlimited possibilities for what we can design and make. Um, because we're under part 103, it, it opens up a lot of chances to make things that could help people. Yeah, um, I'm simply offering my, my knowledge and expertise and experience um, in order to try to make it a lot safer than what the majority of designs are out there. So... Yep. Cool. It is almost nine o'clock. So yep. uh, I'll we'll be <laughs> 10 minutes, I guess, to wrap up everything. What do you think, guys? Wrap it up and uh, be done by nine, our time central? Yes. Yeah.
That sounds good. I know I already took my green screen down because my cat, my kitty is being like, I was afraid she was going to take it down. So I'm like, okay, I'm over this. It's going. Yeah, this green screen that looks like this green screen that looks like our school. We're going to take down this too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. May take a seat. <laughs> <Come on. laughs> that's a that's a pretty good background. Yeah, yeah that looks just that like your school. Going on. I know yeah. it's amazing. Mm -hmm. So one of the things that we got going on over here at Run to the Sky is that we. I uh, have classes, right? So if you want to come to one of our classes, they're $3,500. Wait, we dropped it, didn't we? So it's not $3,500. It's only $1,200 right now for a 10-day class. So if you want to check that out, go over to runintothesky.com. Look at our new price point that's going to be just for a little bit. So if this is something that you want to do, if you want to be able to run into the sky, even, if, even though you may not be a, a disabled vet, we invite everybody to come over here and train. Right now, $1,200. Train with us. It's normally $3,500. The price is not going to stay at $1,200 very long. So pay for your stuff. Get over here anytime uh, for the for 2024. So pay for it now. Fly anytime that you want to. Come over here anytime. But we're going to change that back up to $3,500 pretty soon. So go over to runtothesky.com. Check it out, pay for it, get get that tuition paid for, come over here and learn how to run into this guy. All right. So you can always find me over at ppggrandpa.com or iflyparamotors.com. Do you have a dot com yet? I have several. He has several dot coms. What kind of dot coms do you have? Me? Yeah. Oh, the Arden Survivor um dot com. That's one that I where I teach um anybody, not just for wilderness survival, but it has to do with everyday survival. Can you say that dot com again, nice and slow? The Ardent Survivor, A R D E N T Survivor dot com. And uh, again, I teach people how to overcome their fears. I teach people how to deal with everyday stresses and stressors, and I give them tools so that they can live life confidently and as secure as they possibly can. I help help them and enhance their um, uh, senses as well as you know help them to understand more about their surroundings. So is it really a fear of heights or a fear of falling? Just... It's a fear of that sudden stop at the end. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's one of those. Yeah. <laughs> that's, well, what, that's what I have found over time. It's, it's not the fear of heights that get people. It's that fear of the sudden stop and the feeling of a helplessness during the fall. And also too, like me, you won't see me on a ladder up on a roof. It's just, I don't feel secure. Sure. But you strap a, a paramotor, a trike on me, and I'll go and fly, you know, uh, 18,000 feet sure. without blinking an eye. Mm -hmm. You get me 20 feet on a ladder, I'm shaking yep. like, yep. I can't do it, don't want to do it. Yeah, I found that anybody who's connected into something like if they're rappelling or climbing, if they're connected in a harness and a rig that they've set up, they don't think. I have no problem. Yeah, no. I have no problem rappelling. As a matter of fact, I love rappelling. Yeah. And it's not just heights. It's also about any kind of environment that you're in. Um, cause I've been a rescue scuba diver for years. So I teach people about water safety. I've been a lifeguard for years. So I teach people about how to, how to help survive in water situations, help, help stay calm and things like that in adverse situations and, and, uh, things that happen either instantly or something that's even perceived how to deal with deaths in the family, how to deal with anything through building your, your life with confidence. So that's the goal. And one more time, the doctor, nice and slow, the ardent survivor. Dot com. And spell that for us because we, we're going to put this out there too where people just hear the audio. Okay, it's the T-H-E, Ardent, A-R-D-E, as in Edward, November, Tango, or N-T, Survivor, S-U-R-V-I-V-O-R, dot com. And what you'll do is you'll get on a phone call. You'll set up a time and you'll get on a phone call with either me or a person in my team, and we'll get you started in the program. Sounds awesome. All right, Scuba Steve. Oh, Scuba Steve left. All right, we'll skip Scuba Steve for a moment, and we'll go over to Kyle. What's up, Kyle? Our uh, okay. Director of Operations over here at Run to the Sky. You have any dot coms or anything like that? No, I've, I've never been into any of that kind of stuff. Man, um, we need to get you some dot coms and some uh, <laughs> some social media, buddy. No, I'm, I'm not much of a, of a person I like to stick out. I like to work in the background, to be honest. Okay. I just like so, helping people background. I'm not too big on being flashy. 
Uh, excellent. Well, Kyle, like I said, Kyle Neal, he's our director of operations. He's take care. Of, he's been taking care of all the stuff over here. He's been finding um, amazing deals for us to help uh, students when they get over here, helmets and things like that, and uh, uh, designing um, the uh, the simulator. He's been doing a lot of stuff in the background and definitely appreciate everything that you've done in the background. Uh, Kyle and Neil, uh, you're awesome, dude. Thank you so much, buddy. Anytime, man. I'm glad to be able to try to help everybody out and bring these costs down to uh, affordable for anybody. just like everybody else is trying. It's what I'm striving for. I'm not trying to get any recognition from anybody. Just want to get as many people as we can in the family at the paramotors. That way we can all have fun. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. All right. We also got our very own Linda Anderson, ParamomUSA.com. How you doing? Love you, girl. It was really fun. This was so fun tonight. I want to thank you guys so much for, you know. I want to thank my chatters and my team and everything. I love you guys so much. I just appreciate everybody joining us on Monday nights. We we really have a good, we got a good team. And Kyle, welcome to our team. And Brandon, welcome to our team. See, I already invited you. So now you have to you have to come back every week now. Because <laughs> Paramount says so. <laughs> Paramount says so. You're like, yep, I got to come back. Paramount says, yep, I got to come back on the show on Monday nights. I do the best oh. I can to try to join. <sighs> I I really had a good time tonight. And um, if you want to be a guest on the show, just go to ParamountUSA.com, take it right to my Facebook page, and just say, hey. Paramount, I want to be on your show and I'll get you all set up or you guys got a friend or somebody, you know, like say, hey, this guy, this gal would be really cool on your show. Send them over to me, you know, and I'll take care of everything. We got a full month. Super excited about it. Got two cool guests coming up to wrap up our month. So the month of April. And um, I think this, yeah, this month was really good. We had a lot going on with the Eclipse and um all the cool videos and all that good stuff so much love to all my chatters love you bunches <laughs> there you go i learned a lot tonight i'm super excited about the trikes the new trikes and everything and so kyle you did really good tonight you were looking at the questions and everything and yeah i was very impressed i'm like yeah you did good that's right I mean, just yeah. want to make sure every question is answered and seen because y'all want everybody <laughs> to try to ask as many questions as possible. It doesn't matter how silly they might think it is because a silly idea can always be modified and improved on or just give us new ideas to help improve things. There you go. There you go. Exactly. Okay, I will step aside. All right. Thank you very much, Lynn Anderson. She's also our PR girl over at the Run to the Sky. And uh, she's our PR girl over here at uh, the Clear Prop TV. So everything that we do is nonprofit. So this is a nonprofit podcast. And we definitely thank everybody for doing everything on this show. Nobody gets paid. Um, I don't even send them out uh, thank you letters or anything. They just come here because they, they love to be here every Monday at 7 o'clock Central Standard Time. We also got Scuba Steve. Scuba Steve, uh, he jumps on on Fridays and does a show also, some sort of paramotor outlaw or something like that. Tell us a bit about that, buddy. <laughs> well, my show on Fridays is mostly about vaping, trying to get people off cigarettes. But I do talk a lot about paramotors because, you know, if you're a paramotor pilot, that's what you're going to talk about. So, yeah, every Friday, 8 to 10 Eastern Standard Time, you can either look up Scuba Vapes on YouTube or go to paramotoroutlaw.com. Either one will take you to my channel. and. Free to watch. Come join. We have fun. He is an outlaw, and don't you forget that. Speaking about outlaws, we do have a police officer on here. So we got a police officer and an outlaw. Go figure on that one. <laughs> Kevin Houston, our president of Run Into the Sky, is here with us. And he has his own dot com also. And he does some cool stuff flying around. Tell us a little bit about yourself, buddy, and your dot coms, man. Uh, I'm Kevin, uh, dot com is f the flying five o dot com. Um, I don't, uh, 
I post every once in a while on there uh, when I can or when I have time. I uh, enjoy doing that. Uh, planning on getting back over there to Arkansas, I guess, here the last weekend of this month. And uh, hopefully we'll get to fly. Uh, seen the eclipse. Uh, was that last weekend? Yes, last weekend uh, was a blast. Uh, probably the neatest thing I've ever seen. Uh, hanging around with uh, some fun folks and meeting some people that uh, – I've only heard about through uh, Facebook or or uh, uh, what is this YouTube or things like that. So it was a good time. And you're more of a TikTok guy, right? You you TikTok yeah. a lot of your. <laughs> yeah, sometimes I do. Uh, I do have like sixty five followers on YouTube, which is kind of cool. But uh, sixty five, man, that's more yeah. than what I got. <laughs> awesome, man. No, it's not. uh looking at uh retiring here from my profession here i guess in uh a little less than a month now Uh, i'm gonna find something else to do so um, gonna get a paramotor cake from all your buddies (laughs) i'm gonna what say that again are you gonna get a paramotor cake from all your buddies i'm on a paramotor (laughs) cake (laughs) yeah paramotor cake yeah i might (laughs) But uh, 25 years, it's time to hang it up and find something else to do. So uh, looking forward to that. Well, Kevin was nice enough to invite us over to his retirement ceremony. And I uh, definitely will love to go over there and uh, and watch you retire. Um, got you a present over here, too, by the way. So when you come over here this next weekend or whenever you come over, I got you a really nice uh, retirement present. It won't be this weekend. This weekend, I've got to work. Uh, Morgan Wallen's coming here, so uh, it's going to be a big to-do. <laughs> but uh, uh, the last weekend, next weekend, I'll I'll be down. I'll be over there. So Excellent, excellent, excellent. Man, I had a really good time tonight. Mm-hmm. Man, <laughs> guy full of uh, information. And if you were over here at the Run to the Sky School, man, he will talk your ear off. You think I talk about paramotors? <laughs> this guy. Oh, my gosh. He talks about the engineering aspect of it. I just talk about, hey, man, let's go fly. He's talking about, hey, how about the design of this, this, and this? I'm mm, like, but let's fly too. Let's, let's fly. <laughs> let's fly too. <laughs> let's test out this stuff. Yeah. This be great. Let's make stuff and go <laughs> test it out. That That's yeah. the cool part. So anyways, I had a blast tonight, guys. Thank you so much, Scuba Steve, for being here and hanging out. Uh, Kyle, Kyle Neal, I appreciate you, buddy. Linda Anderson, Kevin Houston, Will Fly, man. And of course, my buddy Mac, old old Marine here that has a bunch of good ideas. I can't wait to go fly his machines. Mm -hmm. Uh, This is going to be pretty cool. Really awesome, buddy. Um, Well, that's my hand. Hey, check out out my uh, stitches. They're going to be taken out here in just a little bit. and. Mm -hmm. In two more days, well, he broke them all flying during the eclipse. All right. Man, I tell you what, <laughs> I've ripped half these things out already. They yeah. said that, they said keep it bandaged and wrapped around and, and uh, dry. Man, this thing's been in the dirt. It's been ripped all over the place. It's <laughs> oil and gas on it. I've been flying. Oh man, my my doctor's gonna hate me. <laughs> I hope he's not watching. No, I hope he is watching because I want him to fly too. <laughs> there you go. Right. So remember, guys, if you want to uh, learn to fly, it's only twelve hundred dollars. It's going to go back up to thirty five hundred dollars soon. But um, get that tuition and you can use it anytime in twenty twenty four. That's run into the sky dot com. Love you guys with a big heart here. Ba boom, ba boom. And we'll see you next week here on Clear Prop TV. Thank you, everybody. Uh, Much love. Much luck. time. Yeah, absolutely. Anything else, uh, you guys, before we say goodbye to the world? Fly safe, everybody. Fly Double safe, you guys. Fly safe. Right, guys. Love ya. See Bye. y'all. Yeah, soft landings. I like that. <laughs> Blue skies, soft <laughs> landings. Yeah, uh, there you go. I, don't know, I think landing. I'm going to eat that. Go for it. Uh, that's, right. that's, that's mine. Wait a minute. I said it. Yeah. You didn't say it. Mm-hmm. Me. Hold on, I'm right. 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 <laughs> <laughs> All right.